What is up, everybody, and welcome to the Lost Boys Recovery live stream with my host. I will bring in in a second, but uh, today, good day. Uh, actually, Dustin came down and visited me for a little bit, did a little bit of digging. Uh, we had a good day. I got a, uh, I got a two cent piece today, actually, which uh, if I had an ugly box, I'd probably be a good candidate to use it. So, but uh, quit yapping here. We'll bring in Dustin uh, uh, right now. What's going on, buddy? What's up, my brother? Yeah, that hey, was a nice you. find, that two cent piece. Yeah, it's uh, just enough identification to, to kind of know. I guess they made those like six years, I'm pretty sure, from what I can tell. Um, I, I wouldn't even be scared to take an Andre as to where the date is, just, just very lightly. Right. You know, not when they're hard. You know what I mean? You know how you got to soften that brush up? Right. Something like that. It's pretty yeah, rough shape. But, uh, so yeah. I, I Ace, I see you, buddy. Our boys in in the chat. Yeah, we got uh, Roberts here as always. Great moderator. Yes. Sharon Sharon Bortner, Jess Buck, Robert Dix, swing for the ring, Ace. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Viddy Scent. There you go. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, hey guys, we want to give a shout out to our uh, two sponsors, Diggers Den and uh, West Shore Hobbies. Uh, yeah. Those guys have been uh, providing us with a lot of uh, the, the merchandise that we use for our giveaways. And uh, not only that, they just really support us even on an individual basis. Uh, so we want to give a sh huge shout out to them. Andy and I don't sell anything. We're not dealers. So that's one of the differences between us and maybe some of the other YouTubers. Right. We're not in this to, to sell anything. But right. uh, we have no problem with the people that sponsor us giving them a shout out you know we'll give them both the shout out the whole way through this because that's they do it for us so um just thought i'd go ahead and say that thanks guys appreciate it a lot got some diggers diggers dens fans out there andrew collins says diggers den <laughs> so there's there's yeah. a lot of other you know good reputable dealers out there um Anyone that wants to ever, you know, do a sponsorship with us, you know, the more the merrier. Uh, but for right now, these two guys, uh, they stuck with us from the inception, and uh, we appreciate everything they've done. Right. And, yeah, so, Robert, yeah. Robert, or, sorry, sorry, bud. Uh, I want to say uh, thank you to uh, Robert. I don't want to miss say his last is a cold break. From Colbert, Rainy, I think. I always say it wrong. I think Rainy, Rainy, Fish, and thanks, brother. You've been a rock. You helped us. You stick with us. We love you. We got your back. Um, thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Just grab him. Hey, John Donaldson. What's up, brother? I met John at uh at that last event we went to. We got Orlando in here now. I am. I see him. I am. <laughs> I see him Orlando. Look at them guns. Yeah. People, people are still rolling in. I mean, it usually takes a little bit till you start it getting does. people cranking in here. So we usually stall yeah. a little bit just to just to greet everybody and to let everybody know that we're seeing them at this point. It gets a little bit more difficult, as you know, Dustin. Uh, as the more people fly in, it gets a little bit harder to read that chat. So um, yeah, so we're we're going to hang out for just a few minutes, and then we'll try to even keep this uh, like a two-hour episode tonight, um, if we can. You see uh, what Sharon, Sharon, yeah. Sharon says about the wind. We know. <laughs> Today, I got no. Wind burn. <laughs> yeah. Detect America's here. Welcome. There you go. Be a little. Uh, he'll be on the show tonight, so it's a spoiler alert a little bit there. But uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Frank. We got two uh, special guests. We'll get into that here a little bit. But let, let's talk about our past real quick, as people are still rolling in here. Uh, the last show that we did have. Uh, was the women of detecting. Tell us a little bit about that. How do you think it went? I mean, I, you know what? I think even, especially after the book came out from Chris Altman. Yeah. Um, I think it was uh, really cool to go ahead and do that and to actually see all the late, like most of the ladies uh, that were around us to right. react. And, and when we saw them at the last event, you know, everyone was happy. And um, I just think that, we identified some, just some, there's so many out there. It's just like the guys. I mean, you know, we can't go and pinpoint every great metal detectorist. That's a male or female. Right. We pick who we picked based off of 
friendships and uh, re- availability, you know. Um, you know, plus some of the ones we picked had some way cool stories, you know. So, uh, you know, it. I liked it. I think we did a great job. I think the ladies appreciated it and, and it highlighted uh, where the hobby's going to it to a degree you know i think uh it isn't like other like hunting and fishing where the majority is all men i don't think it's quite like that in metal detecting i i think the women have carved out a pretty nice little percentage in there um so you know i I enjoyed it got some new faces in here yeah that's good to see some new people popping in so yeah fishing mary hello all (laughs) <laughs> so real quick real quick i want to share something I, I mentioned about it and then like i said we're just kind of killing a little bit of time here um but our one of our last shows we had um it was all about magnet fishing um i wanted to pull up a picture of it kind of caught my uh greg blake ended up winning our magnet kit um and uh look what he awesome. pulled up look up, look what he pulled up with the 1200 pound uh magnet you know what that is? It's a it's a full size bike rack. Oh, that is neat. Yeah, full a full size yeah. bike rack that he pulled out of uh, out of the water there. So that's pretty that's pretty interesting. That is way cool. He can but, use uh, it. Yeah, that's he pulled that up and he's like, man, he's like, I had he, he sent me an email. He said, hey man, thanks again for the magnet that I won from you guys on the show. Um, and he sent me a bunch of pictures of pliers and some other stuff that he found. So it was pretty cool to. To see that he was out using it and finding stuff. Um, Heck and, yeah! So that's yeah, cool. We always yeah. get those emails from people, you know, saying we thanked them or just, you know, stuff. Like I said, he got the magnet kit and was happy to get it. So it's pretty cool. Hey, Audra. Speaking uh, of uh, women of detecting. Right. <laughs> Yo, we were. I was listening to her. She did a little video the other. It was might even been earlier today or yesterday of uh she was doing a cure song playing the bass to yeah, to cure. yeah right. i like that that was cool my son and i watch it we're we're cure fans so we saw that was like oh that's really cool <laughs> <laughs> squeaks uh, here okay here we go steve c what's up buddy great pictures the other day by the way man he found out he got some pictures of a coyote that were really interesting he takes some really All good right. pictures yeah it was hey cool. Nance. Nancy's here. Nancy's in the house. Awesome. Michael Busy B, welcome to the show. Nancy uh, was also in that book, and then to uh, put her stamp on things, she just found a real. Was it a two real? I, I forget, but yeah, yeah she just she tried to let us know. Yeah, if I was her, I would submit that to uh, Butch Holcomb and get it in that uh, fine Amazing. section. Yeah, right. that'd be really cool. That picture is awesome because it's made just for a magazine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think we got a we got pretty much a good group in here right now. I think we could go a half real. She said, "Yep." Okay, there you go. So yeah, um, stay tuned tonight, guys. We do have some good giveaways. Um, we have the creator of the Ugly Box and the Aquatech headphones, but we're also gonna before that, uh, we're gonna bring on a special guest, which we're gonna bring in here in a second. Uh, to talk a lot about uh, relic cleaning, different aspects, different techniques, tools, tricks, tips. I mean, pretty much all the stuff that, you know, that uh, you, you kind of need to know to clean some stuff, if you're willing to clean your stuff, that is. Um, and before we go on to the show, Dustin, I mean, we're going to talk about this several times. Is, is, as far How far do you go when it comes to cleaning right. copper coins? You know, do you really want to clean them that much? And that's we're going to get a little bit of the side of the story from uh, our guest. Um, and what he what he thinks, you know, not everybody's cleaning techniques are going to be the same. Some people might clean them to death. Some people might not clean them at all. I mean, that's kind of how I am. Um, I don't clean them real heavy because I, I like to, how they look when they're kind of brought out of the ground. So, well, my my philosophy that I shared with you earlier is if you don't have a date on it and it's, you know, just maybe you just got a faint bust or something. Right. Clean it. What, what do we got to lose? You know, who cares? You got a roached out piece of copper. Pretty you know, nice. you want to try to get something out of it, a date, you know, a full bus, something, something. Yeah. So uh, that's just kind of how I feel about it. And so, and so with that, I've actually destroyed a few things in my time, uh, but I've, I've calmed down. 
but that's just my philosophy. Like, you know, uh, Andre's pencils, that was a game changer for me. Right. Yeah, real quick, since you mentioned that, um, I do have actually two nice kits that Andre's pencils, apparently they're really hard to get right now, I was told from uh, Brian at Digger's Den. Uh, he was very kind enough to donate uh, two uh, two kits. Let's see if I can pull this up with the green screen. Uh, I'm going to throw one of my Lost Boys stickers. There's uh, Preserve It Wax, it's called. It's a wax that comes in the kit. Um, and the pencils are actually really neat. I pulled one out of the side here. Um, so everybody remembers those old Bic pencils back in the day where you'd push it and the lead comes out. See how that's injecting? It's not lead. It's like a cleaning material um, that you just push the back and you can clean the coins. It's pretty it, slick. I, I think it's neat. Is that carbon? Is that what uh, it is? Actually, carbon? it's funny you say that because it comes with two. It comes with two packs. It comes with composite cleaning pencil refill pack and a brass insert cleaning pack. Nice. Real right, nice kit, some stickers, the whole shebang in that bag. Um, two lucky people will go away with that. Um, those are just two cool things. And we have some more stuff we're going to throw out there as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, all right, enough blobbing about us. Uh, well, we don't really blob about us too much. It's all about trying to share good info. So <laughs> let's get on boring. to it. We're boring. We can't spend episodes on us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're old men. So uh, without further ado, let's bring on our first guest. There's only two guests for tonight, but I think it's going to be plenty for what we need uh, to talk about what we're doing. Um, sometimes we know we get too many guests. It just gets to be hectic, and it's a three-hour show. It's just insane. So yeah. Um, but our first guest, uh, everybody here at Invite Buckle Boy LA, uh, please yeah. check him out on YouTube. Check out his channel. He has a YouTube channel. He's been doing it for a really long time. Uh, we're going to get a little bit of information from him here when we pull him in. So everybody, welcome Buckle Boy to the show. And by the way, we got three boys in the house tonight. Lost Boy, Dutch Boy, and Buckle Boy. Let's bring him in. <laughs> hey, everybody. Boy, How's it going? <laughs> welcome to the Boys Club. <laughs> hey, thank you. So much. Yeah. yeah. Boys of a feather flock together, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So... so so, Buckle Boy, let's start out by just getting a little bit of your background. I mean, some people might not know who you are. Tell us about um, you know, your background and just uh, your experience level. Um, sorry to hear about your mentor, by the way. Dustin and I were talking about that today. That was sad news. So condolences to you on that. Um, maybe even share a little bit about what you might have learned from him if it helps uh, talk about it. If not, that's that's fine as well. But uh, sure. so take it away. All right. Well, uh, I've been digging since uh, 1991. So now it's been, what, 31 years or so. Um, I started digging in Virginia, uh, mainly Civil War stuff and, and digging with him, you know, when I was a kid. And and uh, I dug in Kentucky, Indiana, I've dug in a lot of different states, but I've, you know, lived a couple of places uh, and then moved to Louisiana. And I started digging here and finding some good stuff, too. So it's been a a lot of time and a lot of different soil types uh, uh, that I've had to deal with in terms of digging finds. So that's made a big difference in how I, how I choose to clean finds or not not clean finds and what kind of cleaning methods I decide to take. Right. Thank you. What uh, what you you had mentioned you had touched base on different soils. So, like you know, you got that clay red clay type soil. You have certain soils that are more acidic you know you have sand you know things like that that you know can really roach out a coin uh and what's that do to iron then you know on some of those that you found yeah with with iron a lot of times uh especially down here you've got sulfides or salts basically any any area in the extreme south of louisiana and a lot of coastal areas will recognize this too um, when those salts leach into that iron you've got to do an extra step to either boil it or soak it in distilled water for an enormously long amount of time to leach the salts gradually out of the iron. Otherwise, you do the electrolysis, you seal it all up, you think everything's good, and then all of a sudden it starts rusting, basically weeping the salts out of it again. So um, I've got pieces that I found in Kentucky years ago that um, Kentucky, Southern Indiana, Virginia that I, that I had preserved and they're just fine. But before I realized that about the sulfides um, and electrolysis of iron, I had relics here that I had I had restored, and then a year later they're already kind of like starting to fall yeah. apart again. Oh, so got to be heartbreaking on some of them, you know, like oh all that work. Yeah, all of that work, and then it's just yeah. like you got to start over. Yeah, but uh, but uh, yeah, I take all of those uh, things and I basically boil them on the stove uh, with hot water for several hours after after electrolysis and change the water multiple times. Um, 
it doesn't really matter to me whether it's distilled water or not, but it seems like I get a faster result if it's distilled water because it pulls more of those salts out of there. Uh, and then seal it up, you know, dry it out, seal it up with, uh, I use Gimplers, um, which is like a tannic acid, uh, turns purple when you put it on. So you got to wear gloves with it or other, otherwise your, your fingers are purple <laughs> for months. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's good stuff. And it, and it, and it leaves a nice finish, you know, with iron, like this is a, this is a bayonet that I did. It's missing the tip. Um, but I did that here, you know, not too long ago and that'll stay nice and prepared like that. It should last for decades like that, at least. That's so, awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. hmm. What about like, have you ever just done oils? Just like, you know, cleaning something off and just putting an oil on it. That won't. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, people uh, over the years have kind of recommended olive oil and stuff like that. And I, I'm kind of at the point now where I'm just like, I don't know that olive oil is the thing for me. You know, one of the things that's weird about oils is most oils do degrade. So they themselves, and it's kind of the reason why you, why all the oil containers for like olive oil and stuff are dark, or at least they should be dark color. Right. And that's to keep the sunlight from degrading the oil. So, you know, most of those oils kind of, I mean, they're organic products. So they, got, they degrade over time just with the environment. So if you put those on surfaces of metals, then it's just going to basically degrade on the surface of the metal and break itself down into other things that you may not want on there or, or it'll leach out and you know leave residues and things so i stopped uh once my once my button case kind of got filled with oil i decided i would uh, <laughs> i would stop that you know maybe you know 20 years ago uh with with the olive oil so i don't i don't do that anymore actually um the, at the most i'll take a little a little oil from my fingers and we'll we'll see some examples of this maybe in a later on but take you know from, from oil from my fingers you know and, and just very lightly after i've cleaned something just lightly go over the high points of the design just to bring it out but that's about it well i mean at this point if you want to go into to the cleaning yeah you know, i was gonna i wanted to keep his picture up but every time i freaking do that it always puts it over their face you notice that yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i feel bad i don't know how the layout it's like it's weird and i don't want to maneuver stuff too much um but uh but no um Buckle Boy, I'm going to start with the basics, man, as far as just starting with a lot. Of, so a lot of people might not have a chance to dig coppers and all that stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about clad a little bit first. I know it's not something that we're all out there to find. Um, but here I'm going to share a picture. Um, and everybody may have used one of these units or not. Let's see if I can find this thing here. Uh, a lot of pictures here tonight, folks, so bear with me. Um, but who out there has ever used one of these? That's a tumbler, right? That is a tumbler. That's correct. Um, as far as clad goes, um, have you used one, Buckle Boy? As far as your clad, do you use one? I, I haven't used one for clad. I still am uh, uh, the type of person that cleans all the clad individually because I just never find a whole lot of it. And, you know, <laughs> now You're not um, into it, right? Yeah, the exception is kind of when I go to the beach, but, but, you know, I just kind of rinse a lot of that stuff off. And, you know, if it looks good enough, I'll spend it. And if not, I won't. But, you know, um, with the clad, it seems like a lot of times, you know, if you're finding a lot of clad, a tumbler may be a good a good thing for you because it will take, you know, always tumble the pennies separately from the from the non pennies though, you know, because right. otherwise everything looks copper colored, you know, all the nickels yeah. and everything work like coppers. But, but yeah, separate out all your uh, your clad from your from your pennies uh, if you're going to do that method. Um, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna move the screen around real quick. I'm still listening. I'm just trying to figure out how to have. Do any of these damn things work? No, I don't know why it does that. Like you think if you would like that would work, but it's really weird. Now there's a lot of folks that actually clean bottles with uh, you know recovered bottles in tumblers. Uh, I think they've got big bigger you know tumblers, but they they'll actually put a bottle in there with um, with soap and you know some sort of fine media of some sort and or walnut shell yeah. and they'll actually tumble them. Right. Sand. They'll put sand in there. I think uh, ah, that's what it is. Yeah. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you real quick how I do it. Not like everybody cares, but a lot of people that get clad out there, um, the, the technique that I personally use is I get a little bit of river rock. Um, you can get it at Walmart. It's a little bag. I think it was like six, seven bucks. Uh, you put a few drops of dish detergent or like uh, dial soap or whatever. You put the, you put the uh, river rock in there and a little bit of soap. And you just tumble it. It kind of simulates like your coins at the beach. 
Otherwise, you know how the ocean is just kind of going up and you ever pull up a coin on the beach. I mean, it just cleans and cleans and cleans. It's like a natural cleaning as it rotates. It just cleans them like that. Leave them in there for an hour. And then I use a little uh, sifter thing and I just sift the rocks out with the coins um, and it cleans them up. The only reason I really clean my clad, obviously, is because if you want to cash it in, you can't really take it in there all muddy. And that wouldn't be real considerate you know, to do that. So. Uh, I have a cloister container, like those upside down water things. You got some with those and all my clad, I throw it in there after it's cleaned. And then when I'm like 65 or whatever, I'm retired, I'm going to be that guy that carries it into the bank and, and says, here, cash all this in and see how much money that I made metal detecting. Um, so hopefully by then it's overflowing to the top and whatnot. But, uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's just my method. Like I said, everybody has their different ways. It's not a real big deal because it's just clad. So who cares? Right. So, right. Right. You know, a lot of the uh, uh, pennies from the beach and so forth, I'll actually use uh, the salt and vinegar method on. Um, so, you know, I basically take a vinegar, a white vinegar usually, or a, or even apple cider vinegar would work. and just put a little salt in there in a bowl and it'll basically shine up the, the pennies. And if, if a penny's too eaten up, I don't even mess with it. I'm like, it's going to cost me more time than, yeah, than a, a, a penny's worth of time to even mess with it. So throw it away. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so let's like we don't want to spend too much time on the clad because, like I said, nobody really cares on that stuff. But we do want to get some more techniques. We got plenty of stuff to talk about as far as different uh, different metal compositions and stuff. Um, the one that I'm excited to hear about are the two, and that's the coppers and the silvers. Uh, a little bit of let's talk about the coppers. Uh, maybe techniques. I'm gonna pull up some pictures here that you sent me of some before and after stuff. Um, but yeah, maybe tell us a little bit about uh, that. Here, I'll pull up a picture. And you can, if anybody wants to say stuff, you give. <laughs> so um, with coppers, uh, you know, it, a lot of this depends on soil types. I mean, even in the same state, you get, you can get a, a, a nice kind of sugar sand uh, copper that looks beautiful, or a yard copper that looks really nice, or you can get a pasture one that's got, you know, that's had cows on top of it, or or one that's been in a waterlogged environment, all of those coppers are going to be pretty different in terms of how you're going to clean them and, and what you're going to expect. Now, um, the best coins that I've found tend to either come from very sandy, well-drained areas or areas that are yards. Um, right. So this, uh, you know, you don't find too many coppers uh, down in the deep south. I, I think people kind of distrusted the, uh, the amount of copper content on those and so it was mainly more of a silver economy down here so we do find a rare copper but uh what i've what i I'm sure that makes you sad too right like that just uh, bucks you up that is yeah so yeah i mean yeah I, I get really really jazzed when i find one but you know it's it's weird because it's like I, I clean them down here completely differently than i than i clean them anywhere else and i i used to for a long time uh have decent results with the peroxide method which is basically um, you heat up peroxide in the in the microwave, drop the coin in, um, and then it's it's going to flake for a while, and then you know whatever's left is what you have. I didn't like the way it darkened everything, though. It made it made stuff look really dark, and you kind of lo lose a lot of detail. And you know, like this copper here, for example, um, I dug in Virginia on a trip there here maybe uh, eight, eight ten months ago, and so um, very different soil type. But I could tell already just from a wipe with my glove that that the detail was going to pop on it pretty well. Um, so I actually made the decision to to remove all of that dirt and to remove all of the patina actually on it. Um, and and let me just uh, disclaimer this. It, it takes, I think, a, a good bit of time to figure out what uh, what methods work for you and to think about what how you're going to proceed. The important thing about cleaning for me is that you can only go forward. You can't ever go back with cleaning. So if, it, if it's worth it to just take some time and just and just think about it, it, it it's not going to kill the coin that's been sitting there in the dirt for 150 years to have a little dirt on it for another two weeks or a month. You know, so I know we always want to see it. We want to see what's the date, what's the type. But, you know, just giving it a little bit of time and figuring out how best to proceed often is, is worth it because you can never go back. Um, you can only you can only go forward with cleaning. So but that that coin um, that came actually from Virginia. And so. I could tell that the detail was going to be pretty good. So I actually removed all of the dirt, all of the patent, everything. And then I just basically. Did you use a toothpick? I used a toothpick. Yeah. So I, 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 you know, for years I've just been using, you know, like a barbecue shish kebab skewer and I sharpen them on both ends 
and uh, with with a knife, you know, and then, you know, this one skewer will last what years, decades, you know, because you keep, you know, sharpening it down. Um, so it's super cheap. And I just basically gently removed all of that dirt, all the patina, everything. It's basically like a softer version of an Andre's pencil. Um, and so uh, when I was done with that, I, uh, I basically took a little bit of uh, natural oil from my fingers, you know, or you wipe, the, you know, like your face a little yep. bit. And then you go very, very lightly over the very top of the design. And that last step, which I also do for nickels, that step brings out all the stars, the, the bust, the date, everything. If you were to put oil on that, that coin, you would lose it all. It would, there would be no contrast at all to show the detail. Um, yeah. So I made that decision to remove almost all of the dirt except around Liberty and the headband and, and then just use just the natural oil from my skin just very lightly, you know, a couple of times over the front and the back. And it turned out really nicely. Okay. Your cleaning style is similar to mine. Like I like, like I like how you left the dirt there, the liberty, because it really makes that pop out. I mean, you want to always emphasize the, the little bit of stuff that is left over to really make it, make it look beautiful like it originally was. Um, mm -hmm. If you go scrubbing and scraping and you just destroy everything, you can't see any of that, you know, pretty coin that's left over. So you really got to be careful. Like Buckle Boy says. You know, when you're cleaning them and using all kinds of stuff, you don't want to just saturate them in water and rub them real hard. <laughs> so definitely a technique. I mean, for sure, there on that stuff. But. Yeah. And I would also add that that water is a cleaning method. You know, people would say, oh, a coin's been in the wet ground and so forth. But it's not true because a coin grows a patina on it. Right. As the outer surface of it starts to degrade and decay. And that right. patina kind of protects the coin underneath from the elements. So if you're going to remove that patina with water, then then it's not true that it's been wet, you know, because it hasn't been scrubbed in the ground for 150 years. It hasn't been washed, you know, with your hand, with your fingers on it or with a toothbrush for 150 years. So so if I had done this this cleaning on this copper with water, I would have had not, not as much of that detail left. Um, so yeah, water is a cleaning method. I'm going to cover your face up because I can't figure out how to change this. <laughs> No worries. But, uh, there was a good question there. It says, if you put oil on a coin, is there a way to reverse it? I, is, that's a good question. Not that I know of, because yeah, most yeah. most metals are, are are slightly porous, and that oil soaks into everything. You know, with this with this top of the design, you know, it, the little bit of oil from my finger is just going to linger on the top of that design. Now I've got coins that I did this to 20 years ago, and I can still see the oil on the top of the design. It hasn't spread or leached down any further in the bottom fields of the coin. Right. But, you know, if I wanted to make that design pop a little more, I just basically do that again, you know, very lightly a couple of times over the, over the very top of the surface design. And obviously with a really worn copper, you're going to be hitting the, the background, the field of it, you know, uh, more than you're going to, as much as you'll be hitting the design. And it doesn't, it doesn't work as well with something that, that has less detail on it. So real quick question on, and as far as we're talking about cleaning these copper coins, um, I mean, I know, I know Buckle Boy, you have this kit here and we all have this tube kit with the, with the, now to be honest with you, man, nobody really explains, is there instructions with these things? Like, do you know which one to use? I mean, how does, you don't really, right? <laughs> yeah, that was always, that was the fun part when I got like, mine. What, which one do I use, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, um, and, and that's the weird thing about this, you know, I, the one I use the most of all of these is the one that has the steel wool on on both sides. That real fine grade steel wool. That's the only one I use. That is that is the one. You know, like it's rare for me to use. And in fact, I think this one's still the tip of this is still perfectly, yeah. perfectly sharp. You know, so it's like, you know, I don't think I've used these a total of maybe five or six times. The the brass attachment one. I'm like, you know, if I need that, then that thing is going to be so far gone that that it's not much is going to help it. And it's, and it's going to be pretty, it's, it's going to be hard to hurt a coin that if I'm using a brass attachment on it. So the <laughs> one that I use more than anything is actually the steel wool attachment. So. Oh. Yeah. I mean, there's, hi, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Hi Patty. There's a, uh, there's a lot of them in there that I feel like I'll never like the, the brass ones to me, do you ever use the brass tips? I mean, I've never used one. I use, I, I do use brass, but I use brass for cleaning gilded buttons. Um, and I use brass for cleaning aluminum tokens and things like that. Uh, so if it's not an aluminum find or a or a um, gilded button, I don't I don't use that um, the brass thing. I think it's meant for like scraping off some harder you know stuff that's stuck to a coin or something. But right, um, it can definitely scratch a coin. Yeah, they seem pretty 
pretty hardcore to really scratch one up. <laughs> so, I've used um, the, the carbon part, you know, the other one. And uh, even that, man, that if it shines, it'll sit there and it'll shine it. So if you shine the roached out part that's bubbling or whatever, you're not shining the right detail. And so if yeah. you use that, it you just screwed up everything yeah it just looks weird mm -hmm. yeah. i agree yeah totally yeah. todd says soft brush i mean definitely that's another application you can definitely use uh did anybody mention these bad boys yeah toothpicks toothpicks yep. yeah i mean i know he said about using the barbecue skewers i mean these are pretty much easily or rather available blah, 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 whatever i'm trying to say <laughs> they're they're easy to get because i mean you usually have them at your house so if you're in the pinch um i throw a bunch of them in my little finds thing um, so out on the fly, you know, if I just want to use one real quick, just to maybe try to pull a date or something like that, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're nice and easy, and pretty much very cheap. So you can pick um, your nose too. Pick your ear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot yeah. Of, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Um, a lot of what I use that, uh, that steel wool, um, uh, for is actually not for any sort of coin. I mean, I, I use these Andre's pencils actually for very few things regarding coins. Um, I right. mainly use them for brass items and, and the most valuable things that I've dug over the years in the last 30 years have all been, you know, they haven't been coins. I mean, they've been either a token or an ID disc or, a, you know, something that was rare and brass, you know, it wasn't, you know, typically they, they haven't been coins. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I use, I use that, you know, if you've got a design that's, that's raised um, versus a design that's stamped in um, that's two different cleaning methods to me, you know, in terms of the, the way to make that design pop and to be able to actually see what's there, which is the first step to actually knowing what you have. Right. I'm trying to think I'll pull up some of your pictures here. Um, do you want to talk about, uh, as far as you just want to keep on the coin path real quick or that's up yeah, to sure. sure. Yeah. And I think um, that's, I mean, you know, coin when, you down, when you get down to it, that's what a lot of people really need the help on the most. Right. Is and and I would think uh, silver versus copper. You're going to need more help with copper mm -hmm. than silver. I mean, because I mean, silver basically don't clean it if you don't have to. And, yeah. And, or and, and, and if you it. have if you have one letter, you know, one letter on a copper or one one maker's mark on a brass item can can make the difference in in knowing what you have and not knowing what you have. Right. Right. You know, right. So, I mean, that's a that's a big difference. The other thing I wanted to say real quick is that I really feel like uh, that, you know, we kind of owe it to ourselves to, to, to clean the stuff we find. You know, I know I've known a lot of diggers who kind of didn't weren't too responsible about cleaning stuff. And let me just say, I've, I've, some of my best finds have been things that I, I did not think were good finds at all. Um, so, you know, if you've dug it, you know, even if it's a site that you don't think it's going to have any age or any history on it, at least at least clean it up and figure out that it's trash before you toss it out. Right, right. Yeah, actually, since you talked about that, Buckle Boy, let me pull up that one picture that you sent me. Um, the one about how important it is to clean since you mentioned that. Um, and there's a picture, a side-by-side -side picture of one of uh, his finds. Let's see what we got here. It's, there's pictures of galore here. This is the coin. <laughs> it's the copper. Okay, why it should be cleaned here. So real quick, tell us about this. I'll leave it full screen because you kind of need to leave it full screen. Oh, wow, um, that's neat. If you yeah, look really so, close, though, you can see that 1722 on his coin, but you got to look pretty close. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so this was a was a copper that I, I actually thought it's like farthing size. So it's like a little bigger than two, around the size of a two cent piece. But it's actually my oldest copper coin ever dug. And I dug it in Louisiana here at a, at a Colonial Tavern site, uh, maybe 2013 or so. Anyhow, but it's a uh, Colonies Francoise. These coins actually have pretty interesting history. They They were... From France, when um, when Louisiana was a French territory um, under the French crown, um, and uh, they they sent these coins, which were underweight. Basically, they weren't worth the amount of copper of six deniers or whatever that they were supposed to be worth, or twelve deniers, but they got re re revalued basically as less. Well, the folks yeah. that they sent them to in in Nova Scotia and Canada said, "We don't want these lousy things," so they sent them back to <laughs> France. And so they. Uh, and then France sent them back to Louisiana. So this this coin in particular has been on a boat crossing the Atlantic in the 1700s three <laughs> times. You know, that's um, fascinating history. Wow. Yeah. And so I, I dug this thing and I thought, well, you know, it's just a washer with a hole in it. You know, I didn't think it would be anything really, uh, 
really super valuable or interesting. And so um, I started cleaning it. And actually, I, sadly, I miscleaned it because uh, because I used water on it, um, which removed a lot of the of the detail. OK, and it left kind of this lump, unidentifiable lump, but I could barely see a little bit of writing. It was enough to ID it. So I just let it dry out. Um, but unfortunately, I should have I should have realized what it was and used a different method on it. The thing was, the hole in the center made me think it was just a washer. So I, I would have never known otherwise. Um, yeah, looking at that first glance, when you sent me that picture, I was like, what, why did he send me these two different things? But then but then I, I read your description and I looked at it a little bit closer and I looked and I saw that 1722 on the bottom. You can't really make out the colonies part at the top or the Francois, how do you say that? Francois. Francois, mm -hmm. yeah, Francois. Francois. <laughs> but if the 1722 is what caught my eye. You can see the F and the R. Yeah, you can. It's difficult, yep. but I was like, why did he send me that? But I understand yeah, that's how. That's really cool. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's a, just a lesson and, you know, always, always clean your finds. Uh, one of the other things that I found here fairly recently was a little piece of flattened lead. It was like a 44 caliber Colt that was rolled flat, perfectly flat. You know, metal detectorists and Civil War hunters will always say, you know, oh, that's a poker chip from a Civil War camp. They always will say that. And I was and I'm always like, you know, kind of in doubt. I'm like, well, people would flatten a piece of lead just to pass the time or whatever, make a lead pencil or roll it up or, you know, like right. there's no. There's no real rhyme or reason why a piece of lead would be flat, but you know, it, that could be one explanation. But then, you know, I was cleaning this and I, I was like, man, I'm seeing letters on this carved in with a little pocket knife. And sure enough, it said poker scratched into the, into this, uh, this flattened piece of lead. So I was like, oh, well, there's your proof, you know, man, Pretty we got well. not to interrupt you, but I just got a huge super chat again and it, it's freaking Matt again, man. I, Matt, I don't know why he keeps sending me your money, man. I appreciate it too. That's crazy. And like, like I said, not to interrupt, but uh, everything that we get as far as any type of donations, we're going putting them back into the show. Um, I actually just got like 30 some hats I'm getting made. Um, so I'm going to have hats and beanies and some stuff, you know, with the logo uh, for giveaways. So like I said, any of that stuff's going to get turned around full circle and funded to the show. But uh, thanks again, Matt, for doing that. Uh, you don't have to do that, but I definitely greatly appreciate it, man. So thank you. Absolutely. Again. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so cool, much. Man. Yep. But uh, sorry, Buckle Boy, it's just that he needed acknowledged for doing that. It's oh, great. No worries. That's <laughs> awesome. That is awesome. But, yeah, uh, he's a good subscriber. He's a he's good, good person. Thank you. Thank you. But, yeah, uh, with, with, with nickels, I, I basically do similar to what I did with that large sand. I actually remove all of the patina. Um, sometimes I'll actually use water on those, but sometimes I'll just mechanically remove it with a toothpick or with that, with that um, you know, uh, so you get them down to that red layer? Is that get them down doing? to that red layer, exactly. Okay. And right. then I take a little bit of, you know, oil from my finger, natural oil from my finger, and just rub very lightly, you know, multiple repeated times until that, that design comes out. And it works pretty nicely, um, you know, unless a coin is super worn down, which in, in which case, you know, there's not much that you can do to it anyhow. Right. Yeah. I have a really good uh, video on uh, YouTube. It's maybe four minutes long of about cleaning nickels, and you can actually see that process there. And what what's your YouTube channel again? Uh, Buckle Boy KY. Yep. And we got it posted actually up in here, <coughs> right here. Uh, my man Robert's hooking you up. <laughs> awesome. That's why it's good to have good moderators. Uh, Robert, I appreciate you helping us out with that. But yeah, everybody is watching right now. Um, Buckle Boy has your channel on YouTube. Right there it is on the screen. Uh, Buckle Boy KY. Definitely give him a look at and uh, check out some of his videos. I mean, he's got some really good videos. We're all here to support each other, just yep. like Dustin. I mean, check out his channel as well. We all three of us here have our own channel. So um, support everybody that you can, you know, check out some of their videos, give them some thumbs up. And yeah, so mm -hmm. awesome. But yeah, how long have you been doing the YouTube real quick since you talked about that? Uh, I've been uh, putting stuff on YouTube since about 2005 or six, I guess, somewhere oh, wow. around in there. So oh, it's, wow. a, it's a pretty old channel, but I, you know, I, I spend most of my time digging rather than editing footage. So, I, you know, it's only recently that I've gotten my production value a little higher. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. That's funny. Yeah. Somebody said, cool channel. I just subscribed. Kevin Meyer said, just subscribe. So awesome. Thanks so much, buddy. So you want to cover uh, silver coins next? Yeah, yeah I, I, be too much on that one. 
Yeah, I just want to say one more thing about coppers. You know, a lot of times, you know, when depending on your soil type, I, I'll just try to get as much of the dirt off of that copper with my fingers, with my bare hands as I can, you know, because that seems like that leaves a lot of the patina on and removes the dirt, which is about as good as you can do. You know, water will dissolve the patina a lot of times or it'll flake off. But if you if you just do that with your bare hands, a lot of times when it's before the coins dry, you get a lot of good results that way. Um, How about a rubber dub? Huh? About a rubber dub. <laughs> like a ducky or what? I rub it on my, my leg. That's a rubber dub. Yeah. <laughs> Is that good or bad for copper? Well, you know, I've I've seen it take the patina off when it's when it's you know fabric, but it seems like a hand. You know, these coins circulate on people's hands, and so that kind of thing. And we'll get more to that with the with these silver coins because I do something similar with that. But these coins circulate in people's hands. So, you know, it's like it seems like it does a lot less damage sometimes to just take a glove off and just kind of finger the copper basically to remove the, the dirt off of it. So I, I just got a uh, Drape Bust 1798 wow. the other day and it still had dirt on it. Right. Uh -huh. And I took it over and it's in it's on my video and I and like everyone's handing it around the group and I like I, I made sure not to clean it. Like I didn't want to do anything to it. And this old timer, he just took his nail into it and went like this and, and just knocked everything off it, right? <laughs> Made it perfect. I don't know how he did it. Wow. He made it perfect. That's why wow. I said the old timer. I, but like the whole time, you could even see in the video, I'm like, I just about crapped myself. I looked at him and said, I just about crapped myself. You know, just because it's like, I couldn't believe he did it. He didn't ask. He just went, went and he just got all the dirt right off but he he, he did it perfect perfectly I, but i would never recommend that to, copper's yeah. a real te temperamental it's all about the soil type and how long it's been in the ground and where it's been and you know stuff like that i mean it takes a lot of practice to kind of figure out which method to take right. yeah i about had a stroke on that method <laughs> so let's let's jump into the silver so, so i don't know if you can see this but this is a silver standing liberty quarter and what you first glance, you're like, man, that thing is black. And Buckle Boy and I talked a little bit about how we clean them. And we were kind of on the same page. Um, and this is how we kind of do it. So um, we pretty much on agreeance on that, Buckle Boy? Yeah, that's most, exactly most how I do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you basically uh, uh, tell us how it goes. Yeah, I'll let you describe it. Yeah, you basically get the get the aluminum foil and you turn it with the uh, with the shiny side up in a in you know some sort of a bowl and you heat water either in a cup in the microwave or on the stove or however boil the water and you put you take that uh take that coin and you're basically gonna drop that in there with some baking soda just not not rubbing it with the baking soda just put the baking soda in that bowl yeah. and the coin in there and then you just fill it with hot water boiling hot water and you'll get a smell that kind of smells like i don't know like rotten eggs or something it's it's got a sulfur smell it does stink <laughs> your wife's gonna so, eat it yeah yeah well my wife <laughs> she's finding silver all the time so um she digs with me but um but yeah the uh uh it's it's removing basically silver sulfide um it's a chemical process it's like a weak uh it's called galvanic coupling um and it's very weak form of electrolysis basically but it, it basically just removes the silver sulfide, which is the tarnished part that you see, the black part on your silver coin, and it leaves the other silver because there's no sulfide to, to disengage, basically. And so that what you're smelling is the sulfur part of that um, that is coming off of that coin. So um, it works super well. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll kind of pull that coin out of there um, once it stops bubbling and everything, you know, and I'll pull that out of there. I'll rinse it off real fast under some hot water. And then while it's still really hot, I'll just kind of rub in one direction with a with a finger that doesn't have any baking soda on it, no baking soda anywhere, or else right. you scratch your coin, right? And you just kind of work with one direction. You kind of work that, and that black will start to move, and it almost just moves off to the edge until you've got it on your finger, you know, basically. Um, it's pretty wild. So you can actually just kind of migrate that the black uh, silver sulfide off of that coin, um, which is pretty awesome. I think we got an example of that actually What's here. What's the purpose of the um, aluminum foil? Um, it's something with the chemical reaction that it creates. Um, so uh, the, the process doesn't work without those two metals, you know, coming into contact with each other. 
and so that that's how the electrolysis um, happens. You know, I'm assuming that the baking soda makes an electrolyte so that the ions move and it unbinds that silver sulfide um, and releases the sulfur and removes it from the face of the coin. Yeah. So there, here's a little bit of a before picture, right, Buckle Boy, of a, a yep. silver coin that's not cleaned yet. Yeah, I dug this one uh, probably maybe four or five years ago. It's a seeded dime. Um, and that's in the non-clean position, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's black. That's ex just the dirt was rinsed off of that, basically, with a spray bottle. Right. So everybody can see how black that is. I mean, it's it's pretty, I mean, it's not as black as this one. I just kind of kept this one black. But it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty bad. Um, let me take that picture down. And then you can see, like, at the top there and the kind of the side and the bottom, you have a little bit of silvery stuff shining through. Mm -hmm. um, but let's uh, let's show the other picture once after it's been cleaned. And this was also done in your method you just described, correct? Correct. Okay. So then we'll pull up the other coin here as I go through a million pictures. <laughs> um, here we go. Silver. So um, there we go. So there's the clean version. And there, once again, Buckle Boy, you can see the top, the side, and the bottom. You still kind of have those little marks there, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but much cleaner uh, nonetheless. So. Yeah, so that's the exact method that I use. And it doesn't seem to really um, scratch the coin unless you happen to get some baking soda between your finger and the, the coin's surface, which you never want to do. Um, but basically, it doesn't look scratched. It just looks like the coin's been circulated a lot. You know, so you, you have to work it off. It doesn't just ever come off. Sometimes it'll come. Some of it will come off. But I found that it, the best way to get it off is to kind of move in one direction and kind of work it off of the coin. And then I've also found that it will kind of solidify back there if you don't work it all the way off. That sometimes it'll actually be harder to get it off if you don't get it all off the first time or two. There's a question for you, Buckle Boy. Uh, do you have to repeat that a few times usually? Do you notice? Sometimes I, mean, I do, yeah. Sometimes yeah. I have to repeat it. And I also do this me same method for any sort of silver that I find at the beach, you know, silver jewelry, you know, any any others, any silver that I find, coin silver, sterling silver, it doesn't matter. Um, the only silver that I don't do this on is war nickels. Yeah, I've, I've done it two to three times to really get it nice and clean. Um, I mean, it, like you said, I... Everybody has their own methods. Some people be like, oh, you're scratching the coin with the baking soda. I'd be hard pressed to really think that's true. Um, but I mean, like I said, everybody has their own opinions on this uh, topic as well. So, but uh, it works great to shine them up. I put all my coins in a coin book and I have no intentions to sell them. Personally, when it comes to silvers, I like to make them look shiny and new again. That's the way they were intended to look when they were new. So that's the way I'm trying to display them to show people, you know, one day in my coin book. So that's just cool. me. Yeah. That's just me. Everybody's different. Yeah. I occasionally, occasionally I leave one, you know, just nice. I, I, I sent a photo of, you know, my seated halves over the years. You know, I got uh, five seated halves, you know, since I started. And I, I left one of those just kind of as it was. It was dug at a sugar mill site here in uh, in Louisiana. And I just decided to leave one of them because I had done that method with the other ones to kind of make them shinier. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, so it just depends on what you what you're looking for. We got some new faces in here real quick. I'm just going to chat them out. Uh, Brian from the Diggers Den, one of the sponsors, popped in. What's up, Brian? Uh, Cloverdale Diggers are in here, Dustin. Yeah, man, I see that. What's yeah, up? Yeah, so had to say what's up to some of these guys popping in. Like I said, Two Taverns, Todd's in here. I don't know if I said hi to him yet. Phil Bortner. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of people popping in and out. This, the chat's like they're here, then they leave, and they come back. It's like there's so many people throughout the time. So, But, uh, but yeah, we appreciate you guys tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Travis yeah, is here. Nice. So what's what's your opinion on this right here? When you people do you think it's got much harm when you see that? I mean, I, there is a lot of grit and dirt. I mean, it could scratch a coin. And, yeah, I mean, it, the dirt that's there is going to scratch your coin. I mean, people people who field wipe silvers are just going to, you know, they they they're, they're going to be okay. They got to be okay with that if they're going to do that to their silvers. I mean, the thing that that I, I worry about, you know, sometimes is I'm like, you know, you don't know what the date of that is. You don't know what the mint mark of that is. And you feel wipe it. Now, if it's like a, a Roosevelt dime or something, you know, if it's something that you don't think is going to be very valuable, then I guess that could be an argument. But I'm also like, you know, these relics have been here in the ground for how long and preserved for us. So why would we knowingly you know, yeah. damage it like that? So 
you know, I just think, you know, might as well just take a little bit of time and, and do it the right way. Right. Yeah. I'm not one to carry the spray bottle, like the little, little Hoover boy spray or whatever. Everybody else has their own name or their spray. Or whatever. <laughs> I have one. I hardly ever use it. I'm a, I'm a suspect. I try not to wipe the coins if they're silver. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good to have a little water bottle with you to spray that stuff off, put a little cotton in your little bag or your little keeper's box, your finds box or whatever. Yeah. But, Yo, a little rub a dub never hurts. <laughs> rub a dub's <laughs> fine, man. Rub a dub's work. <laughs> I'm saying. Matt says I got the foo foo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> What uh do you have any other uh techniques you want to add before we uh go on to our next segment? Yeah, well, we, have, we have more items. I, I want to bring up a few more items actually. That. Yeah. We yeah, have anything uh, brass would be good. Anything brass, uh, you know, like I said, that's where I do a lot of my cleaning is brass stuff. Um, I think we we all find more brass probably than we do, you know, copper and silver coins and stuff. So Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, with, when, if it, I use two different cleaning methods, if the design is raised versus if the design is, is stamped in and really, if you want to be able to read what's there and the design stamped in, then the way to read that is, is with the toothpick me method or some other similar method where you're going to take everything off of that surface like this, and then you're going to leave only what's down in the bottom. Now, if you, if you use water on it, it's all gone. Right. So right. you'll never, ever see what was there. OK, right. so you got to you got to use a toothpick method to to uh, to for a design that's stamped in. So uh, in a button book, this would be a, a recessed mark RM. Um, now, if the if the thing's raised, if the design is raised, um, then a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use that little Andre's uh, uh, steel wool uh, pencil and I'll just go over the top. So here we have a design that's raised. You notice that, you know, the eagle wings, they kind of get lower to the to the background there as you go. So I use this. I use a combination on this button. I use this steel wool on the very high points of the design. And then as it got closer down, I just finish it off with some gentle toothpicking, just just where the design got really low to the back of the field. And then I did the same thing that I do with the coppers, where I just take a little bit of oil, natural oil from my skin and just go very lightly over the top mm -hmm. and I brought it right out. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, so any sort of raised mark on the back of a button, I also do the same way. Uh, and those are, in a in a button book, those would be uh, a raised mark to press channel, you know, would RMDC would be how they would be listed. Um, so any any button that's got, or token that's got any, a lot, of, a lot of relief, you know, between the background field and the design, a lot of times I'll take that little steel wool and go over that and it brings that top right out. If I wipe that once, you know, it's going to be legible, so. Right. Here's a good question, not to interrupt you there. Uh, Renaissance wax. We have, we have some of that. We're going to be giving away with the with the cleaning kits. I personally never used it. Have you ever I used any use type it. of waxes? I've never used it. Uh, I would imagine it'll be similar to like a like a like a thin coating of oil over the whole yeah. thing, to where you probably will will gain some stuff and lose <laughs> some stuff. You know, it's hard to know. Oh. Hard to know. Exfoliating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cold cream. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd be willing to try it. I mean, you know what I mean? It's uh, it's in the kit. Why not try it on a coin to see what the results are? I mean, that's you, you only learn by trying it out, right? So, I mean, you might like it, you might not. Just pick a coin you kind of think about, exactly. you know, whatever. So, But that was a good question. So. That was. Um, yeah, it's the, it's the hardest thing to do is, is to know how far really to push a coin, uh, I mean, or, or any item anything you want to read um you know and let's face it 95 percent of the time we're looking for dates if we can uh dates or, or a mintage or some sort of mark and you know it's like when do you stop you know like you because for me the tipping points always i think i see them letters you know when i own a copper coin i i see the letters going around and you know and you go you get into it and before you know it you just jinkied it all up yeah and uh, how how are you determining not to do that how like is there a point where you're just like well if i don't see it i don't see it i'm done yeah i kind of do cleaning you know a little bit at a time sometimes and it gives me a little perspective to say should i take this uh, you know further or not when i dug a, a civil war id disc i was terrified because the those things are just 
thinly stamped in, and I know there's not going to be a lot of detail left. It might be only in the patina, and if I put it in <laughs> water, it'll be gone. I'll never know the soldier's name again. I mean, I felt like I was shaking. You know, there's a lot riding on that. Right. You know, here's a, such right. a personal item, and if I screw this up, I will never know who it belonged to. And so I, I literally took pictures, and then I did a little bit of cleaning, and then took pictures, and then did a little more cleaning. And eventually I said, I, I can read enough of this. I'm going to stop. <clears throat> And so, you know, it, it's just sitting in there and it's probably, you know, I could take it further, but if I take it further, it may not be visible anymore. And so right. I'd rather, I'd rather have it as it is where I can, where I, where I, you know, I know what's on it. So, you know, I, I just clean a little bit at a time. And, and, you know, the other thing I would say is know your limits. You know, if, if you can't, if it's not an item that you have any experience with cleaning and it could be valuable or rare or interesting or, or personalized, then, then take it to a professional. There are plenty of people who restore relics and they're not that expensive um, compared to what some of these relics can be worth. Um, take it to a master jeweler to have them reconstruct it, you know, and, and, uh, and, and put it back together, you know, so things like that, just, just know your limits. Okay. So this is a, this is a Victorian bar brooch. It's coin silver. It was probably made around 1860. Um, so in a Victorian era dress, they would have, ladies would have had a, a little pin right up here on the collar, a bar pin that went straight across. Uh, and so it was silver. The, the right side of it is folded completely back by the plow. It caught a plow hit, busted the pin off of the back of it and, and folded it right over like that. But the whole thing is complete. But I thought, you know, if I bend this, you know, even if I kneel this in an oven and try to bend this back, I'm going to break this. Yeah. So I took it to a master jeweler to have him restore it for me. Yeah. So everybody that's watching in the chat, if you look at this picture real, real quick, I'm going to change it over to what the restored part was. And you said you took us to a guy that actually does this. You can see it. It almost looks like it's broken off there, but it's not. Um, I'm going to stop the screen and share the other one. And you get to see what the guy did to restore it. So I'm here in a that's second. That's so cool. I know it's going to be but, awesome. Uh, yeah, it it, def, it almost looks like a whole nother piece. It's pretty pretty wild, but uh, let me see. What hurry, that. Andy, hurry! I know it's, it's like cleaning and it's like fix. Yeah, so here we go. So here's the here's the repaired piece. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So it almost looks like it has like some black. Like I don't know. It's like it's is it two toned or does it just look like that? Uh, what it is is it's jeweler's polish, but because it's got so much detail in it, the jeweler's polish kind of sits down in the in the recesses of the design. So when they buff it, uh, it it just is still there. And I could go with a maybe a little toothpick and a little tiny jeweler's cloth and get that all out of the, all the details. But I just think it looks pretty rad, like it is. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah you like mix that with silver solder and and even put a pin on the back of it. So. Wow, that's awesome. Yep. yep, so it is wearable again. Yeah. Real nice. quick, I'm going to, I know we're moving right along here, and it's just like Relic City, <laughs> as far as cleaning goes. But there's one I particularly want to know your methods of, and it's one that I don't really think I've really tried to clean here. Um, I'm going to pop the picture here in a second. I'm a clicking fool here tonight. Um, but here, uh, buh, 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 buh. it's going to be aluminum tokens. And I want to show you a picture of, some of Buckle Boy's aluminum tokens here, if I can find the picture. Um, and get your uh, get your cleaning methods. Man, there's so many pictures here. Pictures everywhere. Uh, yeah, don't fall asleep on me. <laughs> Good Lord. Okay, here we go. Dirty, dirty aluminum tokens, I call it. Yeah. Let's start with a D. So, so aluminum tokens, we all find them out there. They always kind of look like that. They're always kind of crusty, have dirt. They, some of the stuff's there. Um, let me hear your methods on these things, because I, I don't very seldom clean them. I, yeah, so um, so up here in the upper left is a Louisiana tax token from the 30s. Super common find. These are all three Louisiana common finds. Um, the one in the center there in the top, the little thing is a, is aluminum religious medallion. And then, of course, a Mardi Gras doubloon, which is also aluminum from like the 70s or 80s or 60s. Anyhow, so um, three common finds. Um, what I normally do is I use a brass brush on these brass bristle brush. You can get them even at Harbor Freight for like, you know, four or five bucks or something. A little tiny brass brush. And I use the same method, actually, for the soil type here for cleaning gilded buttons. Um, I'll use a dot of soap, uh, dish soap, liquid dish soap, and I'll use that brass brush. Now I'm a more aggressive with these 
uh, with these aluminum fines, because um, if it's a token, I want to be able to ID it and so forth. And and I, I know some people have used other methods on these things and CLR and stuff like that. But it, I even tried sandblasting them, but they kind of looked gray after I was done sandblasting them. It didn't look like aluminum anymore. Um, right. So I used that little brass brush. And then uh, just basically with a brass um, safety pin, I'll go through at the end and just kind of uh, uh, finish up any sort of little pieces where there's, you know, some crud remaining. So, yeah, they turn out pretty nice. The, uh, real quick, guys, we're in an hour at the show. I think it's time for a giveaway, and I think it's time to give away one of these cool cleaning pencil kits. Man, time's flying, I'll tell you, isn't it? <laughs> I can't no. believe it's been over an hour. I know. I was like, holy crap. I mean, this this topic, to me, I didn't think would go. I mean, there's so much different ways to talk about stuff. But uh, yeah, so boy, you, you definitely have skills and knowledge on this topic. He knows uh, the lingo. He knows like yeah. the lingo and the names of the technical. Like I just kind of clean them. <laughs> so, I'm straight and pressed. But no, I mean that's what we try to get the you know the people that know what they're talking about for the show because you know Dustin and I we're not professionals and you know we don't know we don't know the best ways to clean some of this stuff. So we try to get people on the show that we feel can you know offer some good value to people watching. So yeah, um, who is a professional in metal detecting, right? It's like right. we all we all just help each other. You know, it's part of the yeah. community part of this. But uh, so, yeah, we're going to give away one of these really cool kits. I'm throwing in a Lost Boys sticker, Preserve It Wax, two different pencils, Digger's Den sticker. A nice little kit here. I'll tell you, I'm I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, I got one to try out as well. So uh, I'll let you guys know how it goes. But uh, Lucky Winner, we'll send that out to you. Just type the yard in the chat. I know it's always the yard for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> I just kept going with that. I see somebody said New England. That's funny. That was Viddy. <laughs> Inside joke. So, Buckle Boy, when everybody's typing the yard here real quick, um, we, we did a thing. We were remember that game. one. Do you remember that? Okay. So I'm We're not going to leave that one down. Yeah, I'll just, I might as well not even talk about it. But, uh, <laughs> so, but uh, so, yeah. All right. Let's see what we got here once. Phew. Everybody's typing the yard, the yard, the yard, the yard. And we'll see how many people we got. It's a really nice kit. I think somebody that, that wins this will they'll like they'll like it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So all right. So giveaway tool. I, oh. I entered win, but if I win, I'll play it straight and right. People need to keep typing the yard just uh, so it counts up here. But people, I see them going up little by little. So we'll give it a little bit more time yet. And then we'll do it. So, yeah, John, yeah. John Donaldson, you're not getting anything, buddy. You could type all you want. <clears throat> There's one more thing I'm going to talk to you about once we get rid of, uh, once we get rid of this kit here. Uh, but let me, let me, I think we're about. Okay, yeah, so I'll go ahead and show this. This is the kind of brush that I that I clean those aluminum fines with. I also clean all the war nickels, and you can get those at Harbor Freight, just super cheap or online. You, know? you clean war nickels with that? I clean war nickels with a dot of soap and this, and it seems like if you brush in one direction, uh, a lot of times it won't scratch the, the aluminum. Mm. And then anytime I've got extra uh, crud in any of the letters or anything, I'll just use a, a brass safety pin. It's really important. It's brass and not steel because it steel will scratch aluminum. So, right. interesting. Are yeah, you guys body ready body. to rock? Ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Let's hit it. We got 36 people were coming and going. There was way more than that. But apparently, if you're not here anymore, you don't get a chance to win the cool kit. So, I like that. Let's draw. I like it because you update it. So, like, if there's 60 people in here at one time and they left, you know, they're so yeah. You know, anyway, let's just. Draw it. Uh, whoever wins, just email me your stuff. I'll put that on the bottom. But here we go. I was just messing with you, John. <laughs> How did I enter myself? I know, man. Hey, Patty. Hey, Patty. Awesome, Patty. Sweet. There you go. Congrats, Patty. You're great. Awesome. So yeah, she's here. I, I talked to Patty. Patty's cool. She's a she's a great person, and uh, she's I can see her definitely appreciating that for sure. So. Oh yeah, congrats, congrats. That's awesome. Cool, Patty. I know we talk. I know we talk, Patty, but I will put the email there. Uh, 
scrolling across the bottom of the screen for you. But uh, so, Buckle Boy, real quick, three ringer bullets. Do you dig many? I dig a good bit of them. Yeah. Um, what's, uh, what's your cleaning process for those? For those, I basically just use water and, and get the dirt off of them. Um, yeah. I mean, it is oh, lead yeah. oxide on those, so it will lead poison you. You know. I mean, right. so wash it down the drain. Don't let. Don't eat. Don't eat. You know, don't eat it. <laughs> don't don't clean them by sticking oh, them in your mouth. Right. Yeah. So. Oh. I have a I have something I read and I don't know if you know any about this technique or not. It could be right or wrong. I don't know. And I never even did it myself. I was just I was when I was reading about some techniques about cleaning stuff. Um, somebody said for three ringers you can use a sudsy ammonia, it's like and a soak for ten minutes. Huh. Never heard of I've that. Never tried that. Never tried that. Yeah, I don't know why you would use stuff. something other than water though. But uh, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, to me, it uh, water works just as well. Now, now there may be some that they're in weird environments where they almost come out brown that you might want to do that. If you, if you like those, that, that kind of yeah. white powdery look on them. So, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that would be my only guess. I'm not sure where, where I, why I read that, but I mean, apparently everybody has their own ways to, to clean. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. I was wondering if you'd be able to be willing to uh, show that photo of those aluminum things once they're cleaned up. Um, yes. Just to show folks how they, how they turn out. Yep. Sorry about that. We got a little side track. Oh, there. Yeah. No worries. But, uh, but yeah, the uh, aluminum tokens that we had the picture of up, uh, the picture once he cleaned them. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Boy, you're, you're taxing me on these pictures. <laughs> I know, I said a lot. You'd rather have too many than too few, right? Right. Here uh, are brown three ringers. Mm hmm. Yep. Mm. And what's that from the. The acid or i mean it's got to be something in the soil type that causes that it's almost like they have a patina like it, it, most of the ones i've found that were brown you could almost flake that off with your fingernail if you wanted to and it'd be white underneath um it's weird oh, killing me you're killing me oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's uh there's the picture of the cleaned uh, that's that's a picture actually of uh of uh some that i sandblasted they don't they don't look quite they don't look quite right they look a little gray kind of weird looking okay. with that sandblast yeah pick photo number 17 should be the one of the of the of the clean ones the mardi gras doubloon and all of that stuff so i don't know if i have that one then because i'm looking through here I uh, might not. my bad <laughs> it's all good I was gonna say these kind of almost look like they were a little bit rough, um, but yeah, I see, I see. What yeah, you're doing. yeah, I didn't, I didn't ultimately like that sandblasting because it didn't make them look really natural. So right, gotcha. Um, I mean, a few other things we can chat about a little bit yet before we bring on our next guest: clay pipe stems. Uh, I mean, there again, what's your method on those? Yeah, you know, I'm kind of a fanatic about cleaning stuff. You know, it's like it's like if it comes into my house, I'm getting the dirt off of it and seeing if there's anything there. I mean, a lot of these pipe stems, you can tell actually the dating of your site by measuring the bore of the hole in the pipe stem. And so um, you can do that with just a drill bit collection, you know, just to slide that in the uh, the hole of the pipe stem and see what the bore is. So there's a, a bunch of cleaned clay pipe stems from a, from a 1700 site that I dug. Um, and... Basically, um, all of those are surface finds. They're not sifted. If I were to sift that site, I'm sure I'd find a ton of stuff and probably four, three or four times more. But wow. uh, but basically, I just toss those in a, in a jar of water and then I let them sit there for a day or two until the, the water soaks through all of that mess in the in the center of those uh, pipe stems. And then I'll go actually in with a safety pin and just push that straight straight out under some rolling running water. And the reason why I largely do that is because, you know, with your clay pipe stems, if you were to put them in a jar like that, they actually mold because they're porous and they right. just stink and, and mold and so forth if you don't let them completely dry out. So I just I just clean them all for that reason. Sometimes they have stamp stamps on them, makers marks on them. But also my wife and I have a metal detecting Christmas tree every year. So instead of threading up popcorn, we actually thread up uh, colonial clay pipe stems to put on the tree. So there's an added reason that we do that. Huh. That's cool. The uh, Dustin, is there anything particular you wanted to hear about? I mean, as far as cleaning stuff, I know we could talk about this for hours and hours, but I mean, we, like we said, we're trying to keep the show to a, a regular. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, I got it. I got to admit, I mean, 
I, I didn't talk a lot because you're teaching me, you know, yeah. like I'm sitting here learning from you right now. So I no, I don't have much to add because, uh, I mean, I'm just, it's a lot of information to process and it's good information. And, you know, at 51 years old, you can still learn a boatload of stuff like that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So thanks, brother. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. There's Ooh. a quick question for you guys. I mean, you guys both found them all the time. Clay pipes. I mean, both of you. I mean, Dustin just found one the other week. Any tips for a guy looking for some? <laughs> water. How homes along uh water, uh older homes, of course. Uh canals, mm -hmm. you know, canal systems, Privies. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Privies. Right. Yep. That's pretty much it that I know of that there's concentrations. I mean, but yeah, along the water, uh, do you guys ever watch those mudlarking videos with Nicola mm -hmm. and all them and Chill Bill and they're just plopping out full pipes, you know, bowl and all, you know, and it's like, oh my God. But uh, yeah. yeah, those those are the only areas really that I know of. And um, generally, you'll be hard pressed to get a complete bowl. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? I absolutely agree. I think I maybe have three complete bowls and then I've got, you know, probably three or four jars like that of stems. Yeah. 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 And well, and then here's something that um, just to tell everyone why there are so many of the stem pieces, they would actually take them off as they got filled with the nicotine or whatever, you know, tobacco fluid. So as they would fill up, they would just break it off the end throw the piece down and keep going until that was it until you know it was all clogged up because they didn't really have ways of uh unclogging them back then the other the other thing is that they would often too you'd buy a you'd buy a bowl of tobacco at a at a tavern and they'd hand you the pipe you know pre-packed and then before you return the pipe you know for sanitation reasons you'd also do the same thing where you just snap the end off and hand the pipe back after you empty the bowl out so they're like uh, one of the first kind of throwaway items, disposable items, you know, ever made. The other neat thing about these is, is that they uh, they actually contain. This is kind of creepy and weird, but they actually contain the DNA of of the of the person that smoked it, um, or the people that smoked it, because clay's porous and it does preserve, you know, pieces of DNA in there. So that's pretty wild, you know, if you're cleaning <laughs> clay pipes to think about um, that, wow. that, that they've wow. actually been able to to figure out, you know some some information about some of the people who smoked those you know on the archaeological side of things wow. that's fascinating brother wow yeah. thank you yeah well buckle boy we're gonna say our goodbyes we appreciate you come on and like i said sorry we didn't get to show you all of your pictures like i said there was just so many to click on and sift through uh, we do appreciate your knowledge and uh, all your cleaning aspects uh when to clean when not to clean okay. hopefully some of the viewers watching got a little bit of information as far as some tips and tricks and, and just what you do and you know, hopefully shed shed a little bit of light on some stuff as far as helping them clean some of the stuff they may find. So, yeah. And if anybody has any questions or, or wants to, you know, want some cleaning advice, just hit, hit me up on social media, you know, Facebook or Instagram. I'm pretty easy to find. Yeah, we'd like yeah. to have you back then, you know, in the fall, winter time to uh, go over this again. And, you know, we could now that we've going through this we can have more we'll be more prepared to you know pop the befores and afters uh man thank you so so much that yeah. just was like a boatload of knowledge brother a lot of people thank yeah. you in the yeah. chat thank so that you all appreciate. Yeah. wow yeah. You, you can't pay thanks, for that thanks kind for of hosting anything. me yeah and i appreciate all that you all do for the relic community oh thank, thank you. you thank you all right, man. We're gonna we're gonna say goodbye. Everybody watching the chat here still, please go check out Buckle Boy's channel. I know it's been in the links plenty of times. Um, you know, go check out his channel and uh, see his videos and give him some give him some loving. So, thanks, thanks Buckle Boy. Support, thanks, brother. Thanks. Thanks again, and you have a good night, bud. You too. All right, buddy. Thanks. Take care, see brother. You. See ya. Wow, what a great frigging guest, man. Yeah, he's. He was using lingo I didn't even know about, and I'm sure our next guest might have some lingo like that too. Um, I mean, as far as the next guest, we're gonna keep rolling here. It's it's all about electrolysis. I don't know much about it, so I hope to take away some wealth of knowledge uh, from our next guest, Frank. 
<clears throat> from uh, hey, I know what therapy. not to do with electrolysis. <laughs> yeah, I never did it, man. I never did electrolysis. Um, he is the creator of the Ugly Box. Um, just one of the things that he makes, uh, and we'll talk about some of the other stuff that he's also into. Um, but a great guest to have on the show. Um, let's just bring him in. And we'll just just jump right into it. So Frank, bye. How's it going, guys? What's going on, buddy? How you doing today? I'm 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 good. I uh, I just took a break from building uh, the five thousand ugly boxes and about forty uh, forty Aquatech headphones. We've been we've been kind of busy around here. Right. <laughs> wow. So well, that's uh, good busy. Dustin, you want to take it around for a little bit? Yeah. I, you know, I'm I'm a little interested if you could tell us a little bit about your background, um, and then okay. just go right into the ugly box because I think that's where everyone's focus is you know but i'd like to know a little bit more about you sir um as i've seen you over the years i i have been detecting metal detecting for 37 years um my first couple years uh, so i was a police officer when i when i started walking the beat my first day on the beat one of the cool little places that we would hide you know if it was raining um was this little tiny jewelry shop and the gentleman in there sold jewelry and always had a couple of new metal detectors in there. And I played with a metal detector when I was 11. I was hooked then, but I didn't wasn't able to buy my first one until 1985. So that was the first one I bought. I've been hooked ever since. I there's there's currently about 32 detectors hanging on my walls. Uh, I test for numerous metal detecting manufacturers. Uh, do reviews. We run the Detect America page. We do our, our podcast on Monday nights. Uh, we just broke our 10,000 member mark on um, Detect America and the other page we run, Dig It Metal Detecting. We're at just shy of 12,000 members. So it's good. I've, I've been I've been kind of saturated in this hobby for uh, a long time. Yeah, congrats, <laughs> well, congrats, congrats on that milestone. Yeah. Because you just hit a major goal there, so that's pretty sweet. So I went so early on in my detecting, when I was metal detecting, uh, hanging out in the jewelry store with my, with my buddy, gentleman came in, and this was in this was in the mid to late 80s, I guess, mid 80s, and uh, he was with University of Pennsylvania, and he was with the archaeological department, and he had a, an idea that he wanted to try and bring metal detectors into these archaeological sites and see if they could speed up the process of IDing different areas and... Uh, and, and maybe generate more areas of hot areas of artifacts than, than they were currently doing. They were, they were, you know, they would spend three months in the spring and the summer. They would work some of these sites in Southeast Pennsylvania and they would generate a hundred, you know, a hundred good targets doing it the old fashioned way. So I went up, I got, I got hooked up with him. Uh, the first season we were there in two weeks, we generated 500 targets uh, and then I got hooked up with the specialist program at University of Pennsylvania. I was br brought in as a specialist. I spent nine years working at the Southeast Pennsylvania Big Dig. And one of the one of the things, if you're involved in some of these groups and some of these major universities, guys, you kind of have to justify the money that they give these departments. Mm -hmm. So one of our projects, project that has always just, I was just enamored with the whole process was electrolysis. I read an article in 1985. I read an article in Popular Science Magazine about a guy who built an electrolysis unit out of a dust buster. Uh. <laughs> and, and from then till now, I have been working at on electrolysis at a, a super you know, pretty high level. Uh, right. and we've been developing it. We've been developing this since the first one we built, which was built on a four by eight sheet of plywood. Wow. How many years have you been producing this ugly box? So in in the current form that you see it, the ones that look like this, yeah, we are in our fourth or fifth year of production. But I've been building ugly boxes. The, the reason that they're called ugly boxes, guys, because yeah, I used to sell them in Tupperware containers, and you can see the glue and you can see the solder joints, and it looked like hell. <laughs> um, and we've been building those for about twenty years. Um, and we've we've thus far to date. Both both versions of the ugly box, the new one that's not so ugly, and the old ones. We've got about ten thousand units built and and out. Wow! Wow! We are Very currently cool. in fifteen museums, one in the UK. 
We are in about 20 salvage boats down south and about 30 archaeological departments on college campuses around the country. Are those different size ugly boxes or just that little one? For the the ones for uh, like the salvage boats, they are they're custom. They're custom built. Okay. They have they have a much higher they have a higher voltage because they have to cover a larger area. So the ones that we built, the, the commercial units we built, the Pro Series, they are made for people that are cooking 10, 20 coins, large artifacts. They'll okay. run, they'll run a much higher voltage. Uh, this size this size is twelve volts in guys, and I've got people all the time like, oh, I want more voltage. This cooked. Uh, a thousand pound cannon. Really? It, it, just so you know, twelve volts never never went above twelve volts. We pulled a cannon out of Monterey Pass, uh, Pennsylvania, and mm -hmm. uh, it took two years to cook it and preserve it the right way, conserve it the right way, but it never went above twelve volts. So wow. real real quick, real quick, Frank, before we jump into too much crazy stuff, I mean, how how in depth can you tell us how does electrolysis work? Can you give us a little bit of schooling on that? Okay. So uh, electrol the electrolysis, the, the theory of electrolysis itself has absolutely nothing to do with cooking your coins or anything. Electrolysis is the process of running electri an electrical current through water and having a catalytic reaction, which produces hydrogen on the, on the negative side and oxygen on the positive side. That's electrolysis. What we've learned is that when we, when we insert a target in that circuit before the hydrogen uh, exhaust, it, it wants to convert that coin into the new catalytic point. So slowly but surely, the electricity is working its way through there, trying to make it so it can, it can produce hydrogen. Right. And what happens is it's regenerating molecules. It's putting, it's putting electrical current back into the molecules of the coin or relic or whatever that has lost those molecules. And it stabilizes that metal again. And the result of stable metal is stable metal wants to be clean. It doesn't want to be dirty. It hates stuff that's not organic to its surface. So it tries to push it away. Um, that the, 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 the patina, and, and I'm sorry, no, no, no bust on your previous guest, but the word is patina. It was driving me crazy. I want to pull my hair out. <laughs> The patina. I let it go because he's down in Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I thought we got to make, make exceptions. It's fine. Um, yeah. The, the patina, uh, the, the crud that you find in these coins, a lot of guys, that's why I, when people tell me they want to clean their coin, I stop them in their tracks. We do not clean coins. You do not ever want to clean a coin because the stuff that gets on the surface from the dirt, 90% of that crap is not what's damaging your coin. The coins for 300 years have been made of metals. A, a, a pure copper strike is not pure. They have metals inside that don't like each other. And as long as that molecular bond is strong, they're fine. As they start to weaken, one of those metals starts to attack the other one and just starts to degrade the coin. By the time you start seeing those pits and stuff on the surface and that crud developing on the surface, right. that's that's from a formation of stuff that's going on inside the coin. And then all those cool elements outside the coin, they just want to pile on. And that's where you get your pitted and you're really damaged and your wipe dates and stuff like that. When you run a coin, no matter how damaged it is or how undamaged it is, when you run it through the, a machine, it doesn't have to be the ugly box, guys, any electrolysis, that degrade stops. It, it, it stops it for hundreds of years. So where, whatever the condition is, you take it out of the ground. Once you zap it, that's where it's going to stay. Um, as for the as for the cool little you know, toothpicks and the little brushes and all that crap, that's really cool. <laughs> but it's only working on the surface. It's yeah. not addressing the problem that's causing your coins to degrade. Those problems exist inside. If your coin is really strong, it's not really affected by the stuff on the outside. It gets a little dirty. You can clean that off. If your coin is degrading at its core, then all these all, all the stuff on the outside becomes a lot stronger, and they can attack it a lot a lot more heartily. Right now, Frank, does that you know as, as you're saying this, you're saying you know it'll basically where your coin's at now. Yeah. Once you do that, it'll keep it at that. Right. But does it actually help get detail out of it as yeah, well? Yeah, absolutely. Because when you when you lose the, one of the reasons you're losing detail, you only lose detail on your coin for a couple reasons. One is the coin's worn when it hits the ground. You know, you carry a coin around in your pocket long enough, you're going to lose that detail. Okay, you're, that, that's lost. If, if it's not there, 
when you when you retrieve it from the ground, you're not getting that back. The other reason is that this degrading metal from the core, as it gets weaker and weaker, the metal that's farthest away from the core is the metal that's going to suffer the first. So these epi, we call them epi layers, the topmost layers of your coin where the detail lives. And then the secondary epi level, level, the level right below it, where some of the detail exists, those are going to be the first ones to go. So the weaker the coin gets, those are going to be the first parts that want to fall off. The biggest mistake people make, and yes, guys, I know, you shouldn't pull the coin out of the ground. You shouldn't rub it. I do it. But I'm an idiot. <laughs> you shouldn't rub it. But the fact of the matter is, the little horsehair brushes, the little nylon brushes, everything you do to that coin before you attempt to stabilize it, toothpick, toothbrushes, water, anything, any rubbing that coin gets before it gets stabilized, you're, you're ripping off detail. You have the surface layer, which is dying. You have the next layer, which is right in between. And some good metal, some bad metal. If you cook it first, the, the so-so metal gets stronger. So when you do clean it, ultimately, that metal is going to stay in place. If you clean it and brush it or whatever, before you stabilize that metal, it's all getting ripped off the surface. And the key, the key when you when you're cooking it, the key is always low voltage. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. If anybody says bubbles to me one more time, I'm going to leap out the window. You don't <laughs> want to see bubbles in your electrolysis. If you right. see bubbles in your electrolysis right away, you are cooking your coin too high. That is 30-year-old electrolysis, the stuff that turned everything orange, the stuff that ruined more coins than it saved. That was then. That doesn't exist anymore, guys. We have a we have 30 years on an Ivy League college dime explaining to us why low voltage will save way, way more coins than, than any other method. Uh, and it's the only method that will stabilize the metal. So there is there voltage control in your box? Yes. Yes. We our, our voltage goes from basically zero to twelve. Um, copper coins, no matter what the condition, we to make to make my coin collectors cry. So the University of Pennsylvania over <laughs> over the course of nine years spent somewhere in the vicinity of two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars on coppers. And I mean everything from really, really, really old coppers to more modern coppers. We would cook them at different voltages. We would bandsaw them in half. We would test them for the resistivity, the continuity, and we would mark down all the changes. And over, over the time period that we were working on this project, what we learned is if you're putting your coin in electrolysis, it should be at 3.9 volts, 3.5 to 4.5 in that vicinity. Higher than that, you run the risk of creating eddy currents, which electricity passing over the surface and ripping off the metal before it's ready to be ripped off. 3.9 volts lets those coins cure at their own rate and the dead metal will fall off when it's ready to fall off and the so-so metal will become strengthened again and will stay in place providing more detail after the clean right real quick frank the box that you guys the, the box that you produce i mean is it preset is there different ways to adjust it for coins and different things the the only adjustment for coins is the voltage okay. we the, the power pack we had the power pack developed by uh, Digitech in California, they helped me out. They're the guys that make the guitar boxes and amplifiers and crap. So we have a very specific voltage max and a very specific uh, amperage max. So if you were to accidentally crank it up, yeah, you could still damage your copper if you're doing it too quickly, too early, but there's no, there's very, very low amperage. So you have a lot more time to, to save your mistake, so to speak. Right. Hmm. Here's a, here's a real quick question for you. What items cannot can you not use in the electrolysis box? Nickels. Period. End of story. No nickels. Other than war nickels, you can cook war nickels if you cook them in very short bursts, two or three times only. War nickels don't, it, it's not, it's not the stuff that's in a war nickel. Nickel itself as a metal doesn't like electrolysis. It freaks out and turns red. Um <laughs> war nickels have some silver in them. So the silver will react first, but if you leave it in too long, eventually the nickel will get tired of waiting and, and take over the whole thing. So a couple short bursts of nickel, you'll get them relatively clean, and that's where you stop with nickel. Right. Awesome. Now, are there, uh, when you get an ugly box, are there instructions that will tell you for like, well, basically laying out different uh, situations? Yeah, well, points. The ugly box comes with instructions, and it, it lays out the basic details. Uh, we've got we had such a huge response 
to the ugly box the first year that we did it, people were literally uh, m- the first five hours of my morning, almost every morning is is online answering electrolysis questions. <laughs> but what we did was we wrote a book. We wrote a book. It's called The Ugly Book. And it goes into really, really extreme detail, tips, tricks, a little bit, being able to push this to the edge a little bit without you know damaging anything. Plating, we go into plating with the ugly box. You can gold plate, you can silver plate. We plate. One of my biggest tasks is I do a lot of Civil War bullets where I'm gold plating them without using any gold. And they come out shiny and beautiful and there's no gold in it at all. Gold gets a little expensive. <laughs> That's crazy. Very interesting. Very interesting. What, how do you know, like, like I have roached out coins, not slicks, but just roached out with pits in them and everything. Well, like today, I, Justin, not, not to interrupt you, but that coin, well, like today. How do you know what you can get out of it? Like, like if you look at a coin, you can't find any detail. Is it even worth trying the process? Absolutely. Because here's the thing. If you get, you find, let's say you go out detecting, you find a coin that's got absolutely no detail on it. Are you taking that coin home and throwing it away? No. Exactly. So what you've done now is even if, even if you can't get anything off it, even if the detail is so far gone that you're not going to be able to reveal anything, you've stopped it from getting worse. When you de- a coin starts to degrade in the ground and everybody thinks, oh, I took it out and I put it in my box. It's OK now. No, it's not. That coin will degrade faster in the air than it ever did in the ground. Because now you have all the bad stuff going on inside. You guys shut up. All the, these freaking dogs. But all the stuff going on inside that coin. And now they're in an oxygen rich environment. And nothing loves oxygen more than degrade, baby. And once it starts to get a steady flow of oxygen into it, 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 the little petals start pumping and it starts getting worse. So even if you don't want to get rid of the patina, even if you want to save it until you get a chance to look at it later on, stick it in your system, bang it for a a couple minutes. If nothing else, every second that electricity is passing through the coin is years of life being added to it. Okay. Even if you don't cook it all the way through and get rid of all that age look, you're still adding years of life to that piece of metal. Right. So uh, that, that's yeah. my, and you'd be, you're going to be amazed guys. You're going to be amazed. Remember this, even a cold coin that has no detail on it when they're struck. Oh my God, I'm going to kill a dog. <laughs> ah! When they're struck, you have lettering on it. You have pictures on it. You have, you know, the, the right, the motto, the legend, all this stuff. Anything that's raised on that coin, any lettering, or anything that's that's repressed, that's in repose on that coin, right. the metal underneath that coin is a different density. If it's if it's embossed, it's 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 more porous. If it's compressed, if it's if it's imprinted, it's more dense. So if you if you have an absolute blank coin and you simply want to get a date. Or try and ID this thing. We in the in the book we tell you tips and tricks. One of the favorite tricks I do is take a, a completely culled out coin, and I will cook it with silver. I'll use silver as my catalyst. And if it's if it's a, a coin that's embossed, the tiniest tiniest little high spots on that coin are going to pick up the silver first because it's line of sight. It's going to silver is going to hit whatever it encounters first. Right. And you're going to be amazed how many times these perfectly culled out coins you'll pull out and you'll see the outline of a head or a date or a, you know, the motto, whatever. Um, it's, 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 what it's, you it's guys cool got All right. how, do get, how do I get two or three of them, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> we are, we are literally in something like 50 stores right now across the country. Um, our, our personal dealer, the dealer that we deal with, who is the who is my partner in this, who is the guy who uh, distributes them. Ronnie DeGuerre, the gold digger metal detector, is also Detecting Adventures LLC. He's a national distributor. So we, if, if you get them through Ronnie and you mentioned Detect America or mentioned that you were on the show, well, I saw it on the show, you get a discount through him. We have other dealers around the country, shooters and prospectors up in Illinois. We've got... Uh, uh, serious detecting uh, down in, I think, Texas. Anyway, these guys were all dealers for us, and they run, I can't speak for them, but they run their own little deals on these things all the time. They, yeah. they, they uh, half of these guys are selling them on Amazon. We just, we just took, I should be, I should be on vacation right now. 
this time of the year after Christmas, I don't build nothing. I lay around and I wait for the next order. <laughs> I am about 200 units behind today. Well, so. you know, one guy I know who does sell them is Michael Vitovich at West Shore Hobbies. He sells them for you, too. Oh, awesome. I see. I didn't even know that. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Well, I don't. I'm not necessarily privy to all the, the guys that sell them. I know I interact with a few of the dealers, uh, but I, that's awesome. I appreciate that, and and you know, I, Mike, thank you, my friend. Hey, yeah, he's quick. giving away ten of them tonight. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> gotcha, Mike. <laughs> Let me tell you what. Like if I wanted to, it would take me two months to get them to you because, I, as, as it stands right now, guys, you're going to give one away, and tomorrow I have to build it. Wow. This this one, and and I know, and, and if Audra's watching. She's going to yell because I was supposed to mail this out this morning. To her. It was earlier, yeah. But because I knew I was coming on the show and this is the only one I had, I just didn't mail it out so I could show it. Right. So, Audrey, I'm going to ship it tomorrow. Good night, Buckle hey. Boy. Good night. Thank hey, you. Good night, buddy. Hey, Frank, real quick. Uh, there was a good question here. I'll pop it back up. It says, are coins the only thing that Ugly Box can work on? Like, can they do buckles? Like, name some other things you can no, use. Oh I, I told you, we we, we cooked a thousand pound uh, cannon with it. Yeah. Um, I do probably more artifacts than I do coins okay. for people. Um, I, I just want to again, again. I don't. I'm not. I don't want to step on anybody's toes, guys. I really don't. This is this is not something I, I put together in my you know my basement one day. I was bored. We got we got 30 years, 27 years of, of R and D with a major university developing this thing, so it was right. You guys that are really, 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 really delicate with your brass artifacts, you find, dude. Toss it in this tank, crank it up to seven volts, and sit back and watch it glow. <laughs> I got I got people that are I got people that are cooking, you know, four or five hundred year old old brass artifacts with this thing, and they they come up beautiful. Electrolysis is not a cleaning method. It, it is not scrubbing the surface of the coin. It is going in and resolving the problem that's causing that coin to damage and degrade. Right. What now? I, Go ahead. I, I didn't mean to cut you off right no, now. No, no, you didn't. I was just, I, I listen, it's electrolysis. I'll talk uninterrupted for four hours. Yeah. Go My for question it. is um, years ago, over a decade ago, a friend of mine and I, we, we just made our own out of like a yep. DC, old sure. DC. Yeah, connection. I got you. Power pack. Um, absolutely. How do you set, like, when you hook it up, you have to put it in water. Can yep. you go through like the other things we need to go along with the box and how to use those in it? Well, here, here's the thing: if you're if you're building your ho own home system, no, no, no. I meant I meant with yours. Every every single thing that you need, if you buy if you were to buy a box today, when it arrives at your house, everything you need to plug in and start cooking is in this box. It, it comes with this thing. Um, it, it, the only thing that doesn't come with it is the AC adapter. It will run off a nine volt battery. We sell a custom made AC adapter for it because people were going nuts using the batteries. Mm -hmm. Um, but everything's there. It, it also comes with our, the, the, the best addition that we've ever done to this thing was the addition of what we call the thunder and thrasher. These are hypersonic shallow wave tools. Um, one is a probe. Well, one, one is a probe that you simply stick, stick in the tank. And it bombards it with 30,000 pulses per minute. And it takes out every little nook and cranny, uh, a, a speck of dirt. It, it vibrates it out. They're shallow waves. They only work on the surface. Very little penetration. <laughs> wait, give me two seconds. Wait, hold, hold, hold that thought one second. You're good, man. <laughs> this gonna get a is a trip. <laughs> now they're locked outside. I love them. <laughs> I, I no no don't get me wrong i love my dogs but they are a pain in my ass um they the the the, the hypersonic probe if you got a lot, a lot of times you'll pull a coin off the beach or pull a coin out of the ocean and it's got you know you'll, you'll clean it up it starts cleaning up really nice it's got that one bad spot you just can't get to the hypersonic probe you can take and touch it right to the coin it's nylon it's soft nylon it's 100 percent waterproof it can be submerged it cannot leak and it will work on that surface and it will not ever scratch that coin it will not ever scratch it. It can't scratch it. The other half of this is, is called the Thrasher. And it's kind of in the same vein as an Andre's pencil, kind of, sort of. Right. Except that it vibrates so fast you can't see it. And therefore, it won't scratch. Your hand, when you're using a pencil, you're using steel wool by hand, your hand can't move in a short enough distance or fast enough not to create a mark. The, the Thrasher moves it, again, 30,000 pulses per second, per, per minute. 
and it will not mark. And it's not, you don't use it on the surface. We designed the Thrasher for particular specifically for coins that have come out of the ocean and they've got those layers of crustacean. You get it with, with coppers come out of the dirt too. They got layers and layers and layers of crust on them that aren't on the base metal, aren't on the epi layer of the coin. So you'll take this, you'll you 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 run it over the top of the coin. It's not hitting the coin, it's hitting that epi, that surface layer of crud. Put it in electrolysis, two or three sessions of that, you're down to the base metal and now you can just cook the coin. That stuff that grows on the outside of the coin is not magnetic. It's magnetite. It's airtite. It, it, it's it's different kinds of, of concoctions that grow on the surface of the coin that don't conduct electricity. So that's why mm -hmm. I, got, oh, I got a crusty copper. I put it in my electrolysis. It doesn't do anything. No, because that's not conductive. It's not letting the electricity through. You got to get rid of that first before you can start cooking the coin and get the rest of the stuff off it. Okay. You're, a, you're a hell of a salesman. I kind of want to get one just to try. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 and that, that's the sales pitch. When we got this thing to the to the point that it was, we said, try it because they, the, the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the cover of my book is a 1794 uh, drape bust uh, uh, large set or, and with edge scripting the whole nine yards. The, the face of my book has, a, has two pictures. One where you can see absolutely nothing. It looks like a culled out crusted coin. And two, the graded version of it where I, I sold it for a lot of money. <laughs> Wow. Quite a bit, of, quite a, or got offered. I didn't sell it. I won't sell it, but I got offered quite a bit of, of dollars for it. Yeah, somebody commented, Frank, the picture I sent you earlier in the day of that two cent piece I dug today. You said about trying the ugly box on. Here, I mean, here's the thing, guys. When you pull that that, that two, and don't get me wrong, two cent pieces and fatties, fatty Indians are two of the hardest coppers to do right. because they're yeah. they're uh, they're they're more of a bronze and copper than they are copper. There's no okay. such thing as a pure copper strike. I don't care what NGC tells you. I don't care what any of these companies tell you. There's no such thing as a pure coin, uh, even even silver. A 95, a 90% 90 silver coin is still 10% crap. And yep. the crap is what's going to go bad. But when you pull a coin like that two set piece out of the ground and you can see it's misshapen, you can see it's, it's bubbled, it's thicker than it should be. It's got that D grade. You're looking at D grade. You're not looking at what's underneath. And now it's distinctly possible you'll get that D grade off and it's damaged. Those, those two cent pieces, they don't hold up well. But I have pulled that D grade off of a bunch of two cent pieces that came out with dates, with detail, with, with, with a lot of good stuff. So until you get going with it, until you get rid of some of that that crust, and, and especially with a two cent piece, if you don't get rid of it, if you don't try and conserve it, it's right. not going to last you. It will get worse and worse and worse sitting in that box. Really, it's good info. Yeah, it is. Heck yeah. <clears throat> hey, real quick, not to go away from the whole talk, but uh, go for Frank, uh, Frank's got a channel on YouTube called Detect America. You guys watching in the chat here, definitely check him out as well. He's got a wealth of knowledge on this stuff. Um, I, I mean, really, I really haven't done a lot, a lot of videos lately. Yeah. We're get some more. But here's the thing, and, I, and I'm going to forewarn guys that go to the YouTube. The ugly box is a is in transition constantly we have been redeveloping it and tweaking it for 30 years right. so a lot of the stuff you're going to see on there is protocols that we don't use anymore matter of fact i'm going to go through and take a lot of them off they're simply protocols that we don't we don't use anymore um <laughs> it has changed so on on our detect america page we have we have a couple of pages one is the detect america uh, electrolysis coin and artifact page Okay. On there, we have boot camp. We call them boot camp videos of, of this. We're cleaning, we clean coins and stuff live on the air. And we talk through a lot of the details of copper coins and, and delicate coins. And uh and and it's 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 more updated than 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 some of the older videos on YouTube. Gotcha. So like let's say somebody buys one of your boxes. Um, what's what's the best place to get valuable information how to use it? In other words, which one would you recommend? I would recommend getting the ugly book right off the bat. Okay. And, and do like everybody else does and PM me at about 4 a.m. <laughs> I, I usually I usually am sitting here answering questions at about 4 a.m. Detecting with Matt. I have some people in the chat sending, telling you, hey, I need my box from somebody I want it from. And I'm like thinking, yeah. oh, my God, it's the chat. I feel <laughs> bad because we gave one away the other night. And I was like, listen, guys, I, I give me a couple of days because I don't have any built. I'm building them. So today was today was headphone day. Tomorrow's ugly box day. Right. One of the things I did want to say, guys, yep. we're talking about silver coins, and we're talking about, you know, be, 
be gentle. Do this. Let me explain something to you. If you've got, if you want to practice with your ugly box and you've got a 2000 BC silver coin and a 1943 wheat penny and you want to practice, practice on the 2000 year old coin. Okay. Silver is an amazing metal. It takes to electrolysis like a fish to water. You will not hurt it. Keep the voltage low. Silver, it almost can't be hurt. It, it won't be hurt by electrolysis. It'll, you'll clean the silver coin in about two minutes with this thing. Really? Now, uh, we were talking uh, to the last uh, guest about like that black stuff that gets on the... Uh, it makes no difference. That stuff is gone with electrolysis in one or two minutes. Now, really? my, my, yeah, my question is this, though. Like, what I didn't like is he was saying how you had to work it out. When you do the electrolysis, will it just come off? The vast majority of it will come off. And then what we, we there, there's tips and tricks in between these sessions, guys, because remember, you are dealing with salt water. Okay. So if you're, you're cooking a coin, you pull it out, you got salt water on that coin. So in between your sessions, we want you to, um, we want you to rinse it, always rinse it, always rinse it, always rinse it. And then uh, one of the, one of the tips and tricks is when you're, when you think you're done, You've cooked it long enough. There may be a, a, a blip or, or something here of black or debris. Sometimes that debris is nothing more than stuff that has settled back from the tank. So it's mm -hmm. basically just laying there. One of the one of the tips that we use is a tip that jewelers do with with your with your delegates. They sell a they sell a product that they used to use in the jewelry store, and it's called jeweler's paste. And what jeweler's paste is is a tube of, of toothpaste without the minty freshness, and it and they sell it for about fifty bucks. <coughs> Well, keep a keep a regular old tube of pepsodent toothpaste around, just the most basic toothpaste you can find. And when you're finished this process, while it's wet, never while it's dry, only while it's wet. Put a dab on it, under running under hot water, gentle, gentle massage. You guys are like, oh, you're scratching it. Take a look at it when you're done. You tell me if you scratched it. That's that's our that's our finishing mark. And the, and get remember, guys, these are coins that you dug out of the ground. Okay. They're as scratched as they're going to be. Yep. The jeweler's yeah. paste, the toothpaste floats on water. It only takes stuff off that is above that, that is above the surface. If you do it dry, it's it's compound. You don't want to do it dry. Right, right. If you do it wet when you're finished, you will have the absolute best that coin will ever look again. Wow. And the, the other thing is, guys, don't use don't use oils. I, I, I meant to come. I meant to come on your show and start screaming and yelling about <laughs> Renaissance wax. Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you a story about Renaissance wax. I look. I look. You know. I, I look on the on the, the different forums and all this. And, and the favorite line of people that use Renaissance wax is, "Well, the UK uses it in their museum. So how dangerous could it be?" So let me let me set the record straight. The, the three museums in the UK that <clears throat> this product was developed for have a standing order. It is online. You can go read it. That says it is not to ever be used again. The only time it will ever be used is in small amounts on, on like bronze statues that, that have a, a problem spot. <clears throat> when you use Renaissance wax and you seal it in, it hardens, guys. It takes, I, I've got Renaissance wax coins that I have to put in electrolysis just to peel it off. Well, <clears throat> seal a coin wow. that has degrade going on now you've sealed in all this chemical reaction that's going on, and it's going to start bubbling through. And by the time you see it, you can't fix it. Renaissance wax is absolutely not used by these museums in the UK like everybody thinks they are. They were taken out of the protocol because of sealing in um, sealing in the, 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 the bad processes that, are, that go on in antique uh, metals. The only way to stop the only way to stop that bad process is electrolysis or flash forging, which is superheating and super cooling, right. and that doesn't really lend itself too well to, to coins or, or thin metal mm -hmm. objects. But, hey, okay, I was gonna say we're getting we're getting. We're getting, we're getting <laughs> it's mine's very important. Go ahead. I think Dutch voice is very important. <laughs> very important. What about rub a dub? How, okay. What are your thoughts on rub a dub? Rub it in what in the field? Yeah. Listen, guys, should you do it? No. Do I do it all the freaking time? <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, I pull, I pull real, that man. beautiful, I pull that beautiful coin out of that ground and 
everything I know, 30 years of doing this, goes right out the freaking window. And the first thing I do is like, uh, I'm rubbing it on my shirt. <clears throat> right. Just, you're we'll not here later. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Real quick, guys, have you? Uh, we're going to give away something here. And one of the products we're going to give away, Frank, and I don't know if you've ever heard of it, we're going to give away a $25 gift card from uh, West Shore Hobbies and also a product called Speed Dip. Have you ever used that? What's it called? Speed Dip? Nope, never heard of it. So, Speed Dip, I guess, and uh, I guess, uh, Biddy's in uh, chat. It's for silver. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be okay, a really good I'll, silver. I'll stop talking now. <laughs> but yeah, we're giving away. We're gonna give it away. Besides the ugly box, which is awesome for cleaning them as well, um, and a gift card. You mind if we do a giveaway real quick, Frank? Go for it, brother. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm cheap and easy. Go for it. Uh, so yeah, hopefully everybody typed the yard in here. Uh, once again, this is a. I guess it's like a can of Speed Dip with the twenty-five dollar gift card from Michael. We call him Viddy from West Shore Hobbies. Let's uh let's pull this up here real quick and we'll keep moving along. But uh I'm, yeah, gonna, I'm, gonna, give it away. I'm gonna go check and make sure my dogs haven't died on the deck. Yeah, take your time, brother. No, no worries. All right, hopefully everybody type the yard, hashtag the yard. Get it in. Yeah, I guess speed dip is an instant uh silver cleaner. Yep. You ready to do this drawing quick? Let's do it. Better get them in. I'll wait a few seconds. 36. They're still coming in. Everybody type it. Type it in quick. There's All right, one. we're going to draw. Andy, there's one that's called Andy's uh, Andy Speed Dip. Andy Stowe's Speed, Speed Dip. We got 37 entries. I'm not sure how many people are in the chat because I can't see it right now. But... I think there's like 40. All right, we're going we're gonna to draw. Let's draw. Getting close. Hey, hey. my girl Barb. <laughs> I love Barbie. She, you better she, say hi. I was gonna say you better Barbie say hi. Barbie, she will kill me. <laughs> That's funny. Congratulations. Enjoy. Barb, I have my email. I'm gonna scroll it across. I know we chat once in a while, but uh, just email me your information for me, and I'll scroll it here at the bottom, like I said. So, Bar, but the price is anything really expensive, I get half. Just, just yeah. saying. <laughs> Bar bakes me cookies and brings she it to the event. She gets $25 gift card to uh, spend at West Shore Hobbies. So. Yep. Did you hear that, Barb? You get a seven, an $8 gift card now. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it'd be more if she if she baked us cookies. <laughs> I, I, I joke with Barb, but... She brings me my. If we went down to FHA. She brings me my own separate little little dish of cookies. I, oh, I can't say anything bad about Barbie. I love her. Nope. So real quick, nice. Frank. So let's say all these people want to buy an ugly box tonight. They're like, man, I'm going to buy this ugly box. You got Frank's got me hype. I want to buy one of these things. What? How long is the wait to get one? I mean, what what's to be expected? They they, Ronnie has them in stock right now. Right right now, I'm building constantly because we have. Oh my God! Why did I let him in? <laughs> we have we have a lot of dealers that are ordering right now for whatever reason. And uh, so right right now, if you call and order, <laughs> you're good. Right now, right now, be quiet. I'm gonna the brooms out. Now you better be good. So uh, the dealers the dealers have we're shipping to dealers every day. So most of our dealers actually have some in stock right now. Um, I think. Our dealer, Ronnie, has some, but like I said, Ronnie's the distributor, so as Ronnie gets them, he ships them out. If he's got them in stock when you call, you got it. But we're building daily, so he's getting he's getting a supply of them every week right now, so there pretty much isn't a real big wait for him. Gotcha. And West Shore Hobbies has five left okay, on there their website right now. I have, I have literally shipped out in the past 10 days about 110 units. And, wow. and, I'll say, and I'll I'm say only this. about 70 behind right now. As far as West Shore Hobbies, I will say this in all honesty. Uh, if he still has five at the end of this live stream, I'm buying one. So. <laughs> Get them while they're hot. Call yep. me. I'll put you on the top of the list, West Shore. <laughs> awesome. There you go. You hear that, Vinny? He'll put you at the top of the list. 
That's what cool. more can we do in this community? That's right. It's all, it's all, it's all, about, it's all, about, all about the camaraderie. Amen. Amen. I mean, hey, people want it, you know, and it, it's a tool that we can use to enhance what we're out there doing. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. And again, and again, like you guys said, we're we are not the we're not the coin cleaning police. I'm I'm never if, if you're on my site, if you're on my pages and you come up to me and you tell me about different chemicals to use, I'll I'll tell you where to put those chemicals because that's <laughs> I, I, I I and and it's only because you know, I, I was one of those guys, man. I was one of those guys. The first when I when I first started playing with electrolysis, the first thing I wanted to do was as much power as I could and watch the bubble fume because to me the bubbles would like, you know. Yeah, mesmerizing. The stuff you the stuff you clean your dentures with, you know, the more bubbles, the better it is. And over over 30 years and and working with guys that are way smarter than I am, we we've learned that, you know, a coin. A piece of metal out of the ground, it is a living, breathing thing. Everything affects it. So right. just like just like taking a, an injured person in and doing surgery on the inside, that's kind of what electrolysis is doing. It's it's fixing the, the, the differences in polarities, the fighting metals inside. And once they are energized and they're no longer fighting, it's easier to get the detail off it. And it's it's just conserving. And it won't break down again for hundreds of years. You'll get a patina again. Because right. that's that's reactive to the surface. Guys are like, oh, I don't want my coin shiny. I want my patina again. Well, the the seventeen ninety four in the cover of my book has got that beautiful, that beautiful silvery coppery glow, and now it's got this gorgeous chocolate patina. It it, it came back in a matter of five weeks, and it will never degrade again. It, it, it's not in my lifetime. Not in my kids' lifetime. Mm, right. I well, got, we're sold. We're sold, brother. We're sold. I got. I got. <laughs> I got. Bill, it, <laughs> Two questions. I got one question that was asked by one of the one of the watchers. This is one of the questions: Is how much are they looking to spend for an ugly box? Just an idea. I mean, ugly boxes as a rule, the uh, the uh, retail price of ugly box is ninety nine ninety five. Okay. Um, our dealer, a lot of the other dealers, they give a ten percent discount right off the bat, and a lot of them give a fifteen percent military discount. Now, I can't quote it because I've seen some of the guys that sell them for seventy nine bucks. So mm -hmm. it, if you're dealing with our guy, it's it's ten percent. If you've seen me here, if you're on the DA page, if you're on the Dig It page, it's uh, I think it's an extra twenty dollars for the Power Pack guys. There, even guys that I try to give deals to, I can't wheel and deal on the Power Pack. The Power Pack took took, took you know, two years to to get to pry out of the hands of my buddy that works for Digitech, <laughs> and uh, and again, and the, and the only thing I and guys are like, oh, you only want us to buy your Power Pack so you make money. Our power pack is unique. Our power pack, the, the polarity going in is reversed. And the the voltage regulation in the power, onboard power pack was difficult to find. Yeah. So that's why they are what they are. They're regular $24.95. I think we just reduced them to, to 20 bucks. Um, but you can wheel and deal. Call, call the guys up. You can wheel and deal in the ugly box, I'm sure. So Retail like price is 99 dollars but there's variations with every dealer. So it'd be like between 100 to 120. Yeah, generally it's about 120 bucks with the power pack, and okay. you get you know you get the Thunder and Thrasher, which is now the the. I want to tell them that because we're talking about the Thunder and Thrasher. The Thunder and Thrasher is no mm -hmm. more. It's now called the Lightning. It's one unit. Does the same thing with interchangeable caps. Black cap, dump in the water. Use it as a waterproof probe. The blue cap is the abrasive tip, which you you can get it wet. We just don't advise it because it'll rust. But right. The tip will rust, but you, but it's 100% waterproof, and instead of two units now, it's one unit. It's two units combined into one. Right. Real quick, and I have one more you question. Get my the own. wires, you get the carbon, you get all, everything you need. Uh, if if you don't have a power pack, all you need is a nine volt battery. Start running the thing. That works. Is there is there any type of maintenance? I know it's not like a car or anything like that, but is there anything you need to do to the machine ever? So here's the here's the only maintenance on this thing. You know, okay. other other than my buddy Dan Nelson who just dropped it in a tank of water. <laughs> box. Other than that, the only real maintenance, guys, is, and this is not just a, a phenomenon of the ugly box. This is a phenomenon of electrolysis in general. So the wire, the alligator clip that you use on your catalyst side, if you allow the other side of that alligator clip to touch the water, it is going to get eaten up and eventually not work anymore. So you'll have nice. to replace that alligator clip. We just came up with Christmas. I was getting so many complaints. We, we sold so many of them at Christmas time. And everybody's like, oh, my God, my alligator clip's gone. So I got asked, is there anything you can come up with to stop that from happening? 
and on on the commercial units that we build, we do. We have a bracket that keeps the wiring away from the water. It basically just holds an extra longer piece of carbon, and the wires don't break down. So we kind of devised a small one for this. It's, it's, it's at Ronnie's shop. You can, you can contact me. They're called the Carbon Gator. And basically, it just keeps the wires away from the water. You get an extra long piece of carbon with it, so there's no chance of the wire breaking down. Hit right. me up. You want them? We sell them. It's not needed. You don't have to have it. If you don't want one, don't don't call me. If you do, <laughs> if you don't, I'll, uh, I'll hook you up. Either right, man. Uh, I love it. Hey, man. Uh, questions, Dustin, you have? I mean, I kind of asked a few of the uh, questions I had on the box. Um, definitely interesting for sure. Um, well, I think that, uh, you know, number one is uh, Frank's going to adopt me. <laughs> and, uh <laughs> Brother, I can hang out and listen to you all day, man. Even Buckle Boy, you guys are so good at what you do uh, and, and what you've done with this machine and made it so that us average people can, you know, make our relics and our coins that much better. I mean, I'm willing to pay for that because that's, I mean, that's such a benefit to me to be able to take a coin I couldn't read and, and at least know what it is when I'm done. And yeah. And the only thing I can say, the only thing I can say is like guys, guys, and I understand it, guys. Listen, electrolysis has been bad mouth for many, many, many years, and and rightfully so, because in the early days of use, this thing was huge in museums in the 30s, and it turned everything orange, and it fell out of favor by the end of the 40s. So the, the whole idea of our project was to find out why and fix it. It cleaned stuff fantastic. But it also turned a lot of stuff orange. And we we solved that issue. We solved that issue. It was very simple to solve. And then we took it that much farther. I have three coin dealers. And now these are these are coin dealers that are on the side of the road. One is a coin dealer out of New York that basically moves about two to three million dollars in gold and silver a year. And I have another one down south who's, a, who's an ancient coin uh Seriously knows everything there is to know about ancient coins as a dealer in ancient coins. These guys not only have them, use them in their shop, they send serious stuff to me to do for me to do. I have done coins, guys, that are worth more than my house. Wow. The, the system works if you're willing to follow the rules as we have set them up. We have changed everything any museum ever knew about electrolysis, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago. We have changed that. We have written a whole new Bible on electrolysis, and it has been working working so much that these museums are now bringing it back in. Um, we, Ivy League Ivy League schools guys, there they they have them on their campus, and that if a museum and a college is willing to use them, <clears throat> we fix them. Yeah, well, well, here's, here's the, the one thing I learned uh, doing the homemade versions, uh, and and I think it applies to anything. You just can't do it and walk away from it and forget Never. about it. You have to be there and you have to monitor it and look at it and, and pay attention to it. You can't just hook it up to the, the electrodes and all that and let it sit there and then come back in two hours and go, oh, oh. Yeah, uh, that, well, that's one of the things we took out when we started this process. Or the whole thing was, in, in some of the old YouTube videos, you'll see, we would hook it up and we would walk away for an hour and come back. We don't do that anymore. Nice. Now we don't cook anything for longer than five or ten minutes at a shot, period. Yep. Um, and then we then we then we do the rinse and we'll take it back in. Every session you do with a, with a crusty coin, the next session will be better and more efficient. Um, we don't do a lot of things. We used to take them. I used to take coppers. I used to put them in olive oil for for two weeks. Right. We don't do that anymore. We do right. we use olive oil. I, I do. I, I'll throw some crusty stuff in olive oil. I never throw it in for more than two a couple hours. Olive oil's got a weird astringent to it. It helps get some of that crust out of there, some of that dirt, some of the discoloration off. If you leave it in too long, you're impregnating it with acid. There's there's citric acid in olive oil, but it's some, it's what we call microosmotic. So if you coat your coin with vinegar, guess what? That vinegar, that acid is in there for the rest of that coin's life, and will and you'll find that out a year down the road. If you if you use it, uh, olive oil as an astringent and you take it out in a couple hours. The acid, the microosmotic acid has never had a chance to penetrate, so your coin is fine. That's just, that's just you know, when you're dealing with bookworms at a, at a major university, this is the kind of cool stuff you learn. That is cool. Hey, uh, shout out to Charlie Harley. Glad you came in to say hi. Thanks, brother. And hey. uh, another shout out to, uh, I saw someone else in there too. 
uh, Ed Woods. What's oh, up, yeah. Ed? Frank, is there a timer? Is there a timer on the Ugly Box? So we make two versions of the Ugly Box. Okay. <clears throat> the regular version that 99% of the people buy is just the standard Ugly Box. It's not a timer. Um, okay. my, my buddy, my partner in crime, Steve Pacifico, had a bad habit of throwing coins in his Ugly Box and then walking away for three days. And I, I don't understand why my copper looks like this. So we developed this one. This is called the SP, the Steve Pacifico version. <laughs> and, and this one has you'll see it has two dials on it the red yeah. dial is for the voltage that's the simple voltage regulator the blue dial is a timer you can set the timer from seven seconds to 45 minutes um these are special order only if you if anybody wants one of these these run a buck 30 because it, it cost me that much more to put that part in yeah and, uh, and we build them as we are as they are called for we don't we don't stock these we build them special gotcha yeah, and it's not something that's really necessary to have. I mean, it's still going to do the same exact thing, right? So people, exactly. People that buy these things are people that have called me up and said, "I keep putting coins in, I keep forgetting about them, and I walk away." And and, and listen, if you're dealing with a delicate copper, that copper can still come out beautiful. If you yeah. walk away and cook it for too long, guess what? It's like anything. You put a silver coin in electrolysis and you leave it there, you know, for five days, it's going to be black. But <laughs> electrolysis, you can fix that. <clears throat> but why? Why would you? Why would you want to start over again? Yeah, exactly. I say this all. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put it out here on your show. I put it out on every show that I'm on, guys. Um, I, I I stand behind the product because I have been working with electrolysis for so 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 many years. I get into fights daily about chemicals and coatings and all this other crap. Anybody that wants to argue the the the, the theory, the philosophy behind this machine, I have a one hour show a week. I more than welcome somebody to come on and, and argue. Bring your facts. I always do. Right. <laughs> First half hour is yours. The second half hour is mine. Awesome. What What's your show? What's your one we hour are, show? We uh, are Detect America Live. Yeah. We're on every Monday night at 8 p.m. on the Detect America page. Um, this is our, we're going into our eighth year. Yeah. I think. Awesome. Eight, year, eight years, nine years, I forget. Heck yeah! Any, in a while. Anything sure. else you want to tell us about? I mean, anything big coming up? Uh, no, just stay, stay tuned for some of the podcasts. For the past two and a half years, I have been buried in my little shop developing a new set of headphones, submersible headphones. Yeah. Um, and when I started this process, <laughs> guys, I did not – I refused to come out with a set of headphones that were just, you know, a different color. These are <laughs> completely different. The driver, the audio drivers in these headphones are not used by anybody else on the planet. We're the first person to use it because we developed it here. Um, awesome. People don't realize that submersible headphones, I don't care how loud you can get them or whatever, submersible headphones are a flat driver. They're called a piezo plate driver. Piezo plate drivers cannot produce 20 to 30% of the tones that you should be able to hear out of your metal detector. And here's another fact. There's really cool, really expensive underwater submersible metal detectors that have an external speaker. 20 to 30% of those tones aren't coming out of that either because that speaker can't produce it. The speaker that we took two and a half years to find, the driving system that we finally figured out, produces 100% of the human audible range. So you will hear every single tone and it produces it at 85 decibels, which is the, the, the most volume of any submersible on the market today. Mm -hmm. And the first thing everybody, I, I loved it because we had we had probably twenty people testing them, and the first words out of everybody's mouth is, "Wow, I'm hearing I'm hearing sounds that I've never heard before," and right. that's it. That that means we got it right. So they are called the Aquatech. Um, a matter of fact, I just finished building forty of them. They're going out to dealers now, uh, wow. and yeah. we're, we'll be on we'll be on a few podcasts here and there talking about the Aquatechs coming up. There's a lot of work went mm -hmm. into the Aquatech. Real quick on that. Go Real ahead. On the headphones, I mean, obviously they're Aquatech, so they're for the water. Most, you know, obviously everybody. Yeah, that. they are. They are designed specifically for underwater. Correct. Um, as far as that goes, I mean, how many different models will they be made for applications? Right, right now, we uh, we are licensed to build them for the Equinox and the Mine Lab CTX thirty thirty. We are in talk. I'll go so far as to say we're in talks with two other metal detecting <laughs> companies. So they they will be produced in the future for a couple more. I don't necessarily want to say who, right? Um, but 
it rhymes with regend. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> we're, not, we're not there yet. I, I am. I'm talking with Delek and those guys. And, and if we can come to a meeting of the minds, we'll be producing it for Noka. Um, we want to produce it for Garrett. We're talking to some of those people. We don't know. Right now, we're we're in those two lanes, and and then we will see what's coming. We we know we'll we'll have a couple more models down the road, but we'll see when. Awesome. Well, I guess uh, any more stuff you want to say, Dustin? I know Frank's going to give away an ugly box tonight, so we definitely appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, an ugly box is going to take at least two days for me to ship it because I have to build it tomorrow. Hey, Frank, listen. If I would it, it's okay. You don't have to sleep tonight. You can just work tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, still got four, I still got four or five Aquatex I got to build before bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say we get down. Let's work you on that giveaway. Yeah, let's uh, everybody start typing the yard there. <clears throat> and we'll get our groove in there. Yeah, we thanks uh, thanks for doing that, uh, Frank. We appreciate yeah, it. Frank, you did not. Listen, somebody, somebody offers me a chance to talk. <clears throat> I'm here. <laughs> we can Man, talk about pain crying next time. I don't care. We'll just talk. Right. Frank, I'd love for me, you have you ever met Charlie Harley? I I, I want to say I did, but I don't know. He is another fascinating young man. And let me tell you, I think the three of us sitting down would have one one hoot of a time. It's, it's a ball, dude. Like I said, it's like if I get a chance to talk about any topic that I'm <laughs> halfway aware of, I'll talk for hours. They make me. They make me. Oh, they threaten to mute my mic on our show. So. <laughs> We're collecting oh, comments. Who's that? Who, who's that? Mm -hmm. I like doing that to my wife. <laughs> uh, all right. So how are we looking? We got how many are in the chat? Forty-four. We got. 43. Yeah, you know Frank's not. <clears throat> What's that? Did you take Frank out? I did not. <laughs> yeah, he's not here. He left. <clears throat> he left. Maybe he did leave. Well, he'll come back if he does. <clears throat> well, Frank, you have to come back. <clears throat> but yeah. uh, everybody's typing it. Type in the yard. We're still doing the, the giveaway. We just, I think Frank will be right back. Frank's, I think he's out building one a while. Here he comes. Either that or uh, beating the dogs or something. <laughs> nah, just, you just can't let me. I'm, I'm good with computers as long as I don't have to touch them. And yeah, as soon exactly. as I do, I, I do, I do crap like that and I just kill the whole That's thing. Funny. We thought you were building the next ugly box for the next guy yeah, to win. Yeah, we I went to move my computer. I shut everything off. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's awesome. Hilarious. All right, let's look at where we're at here. We're gonna hit this bad boy real quick. So we're, I think we're up to par here. Let's let's do this here. Did, did everyone give Andy a, a like, a thumbs up? That's in this conversation. I mean, Andy put a lot Andy. of work into this one, lining up his guests. Let's give him his thumbs up. So After we good. The in. All right, guys. So the lucky winner is going to win an ugly box from my man Frank down here. Like I said, thanks again, Frank. It's awesome. I'm sure someone's going to love it. And whoever yeah. wins it. Next time you have next time you have it, y'all, we'll, we'll give away a pair of uh, Aquatex. There you go. Awesome. We'll bring you back in the, you know, in the fall or in the winter. Yeah, don't bother me in the summer because the, the little bit of time I'm going to have to dig, I'll be at the beach, brother. I don't blame you one bit, brother. All right, fellas, here we go. Here we go. 43 entries. Oh. <laughs> no way. Oh, that's perfect. They can wait. <laughs> I can take oh, my time and build awesome. it now. <laughs> All right, so that's that's cool. That's cool. Because here, here's the deal. Shelly and Dawn have them. But I've been promising Shelly and Dawn a timered piece, a, a piece with the timer. So that's, that's, that's wonderful. So Shelly and Dawn, I'm not only going to send you one, I'm going to send you one with the timer. And you know, oh, they awesome. were they were in our book, our book that was put out by uh, Robert yes. Alton too. That was so, awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, ladies. Dawn, Dawn so is a, is an avid ugly boxer. Dawn has taken to it like a fish to water. And uh, and she will she will thoroughly enjoy the uh, <laughs> she the, uh, says yes. version of the ugly box. <laughs> awesome, Take yeah. Care. And you guys owe us for getting you hooked up, uh, <laughs> on Jolly. So you guys owe us. We'll see us next. <laughs> just, 
cheeseburger, fries, <laughs> something. Well, Frank, we appreciate you coming on the yeah, show. Frank. I definitely a good laugh from you. I, I can really get your vibe and just having a fun time. I mean, that's what we Absolutely. really like to do. All, all about the fun, brothers. All about the fun. Oh, yeah, yes, definitely. Sir. A lot of laughs, a lot of good info you brought to the table as well. I mean, definitely uh, really appreciate all that. I, I didn't know much about electrolysis, but now I know a little bit I more. I just want to put it out there, the guys that are playing with it. And again, it doesn't matter. I've been working with electrolysis for almost 30 years, and I've been working with a lot, many different kinds other than ugly box. I've worked with high voltage electrolysis. If anybody has questions about their unit, if they want to make their unit safe, if they want to make it more effective, they want any questions about it, PM me. I, 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 I only really answer my PM. I look at my email once in a while. But right. if you're on Facebook, PM me at DA Frank Lopergolo. Or you can send me an email to Ugly Gear USA. That's our company at AOL.com. And don't don't break my balls about being AOL still because I'm still on AOL. <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll answer your question for you. But I, I, I literally, guys, I literally spend my first couple hours every morning sitting here answering electrolysis questions and i'm happy to do it really and that, awesome. that's you know you can't ask for more when you buy anything nowadays because no absolutely one else i want i want people that especially people that buy it, i want them to have a good experience we have a lot of success and i get it it's tricky you have to pay attention to what you're doing and if i can help you get to that point i'll absolutely help you get to that point awesome. thank you brother we got some people in the chat saying they're going get to get to one of these boxes so we might you have some sales you might be busy all night tonight. Ah, that's that's not different. Like I no, said, no, no. tonight tonight's dedicated. Like I I have I have to have an order of of Aquatex out in the morning. I have no no leeway on this, but awesome. I will uh, I will right early tomorrow morning. We'll we're cranking out boxes. Right, Frank, we might Thank might you. want to have you back on the show. Um, once it comes to a little bit warmer season, I do a lot of water hunting myself, and I do yeah. use waterproof headphones already. Um. Maybe we'll have you back to talk about this headphones and a little bit of water stuff, you know, if you're into that. So absolutely, brother. You, you give me a call. I'm there. Awesome. Hey man, definitely awesome asset to the show tonight. Very Thanks cool. for having me, guys. Thank Heck you, yeah. sir. You got some work to do, it looks like. Yeah, I'm going there now. I think right, I don't my dogs are too quiet. I'm not sure where they are. And now I gotta go find them. Awesome. <laughs> All right, brother. Thanks again for the giveaway, and we'll see you soon, hopefully. Thank you, man. All right, brother. Thank see you. you. Good night. Peace. Wow. Man. Wow. What a great guest. Yeah, definitely. Definitely funny guy. I, I knew he was kind of yeah. a jokey guy, but uh, that was that was fun. <laughs> so. Wow. Just two great guests tonight. Uh, a yeah. lot of information. Woo. Yeah. You up a good one, brother. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we try to get some good people on the show. Yeah. A lot of stuff like tonight. I mean, I didn't know much about electrolysis. I said it how many times now? Um, I never did it personally. I never tried it. I mean, it makes me want to kind of try it now on that coin that I found today. Um, you know, what do I got to lose? You know what I mean? It's not oh, much detail right. there, but if I can get a little bit of, you know, stuff to see out of it. Oh, I can't wait till uh, I call uh, Vidi up later on tonight. Yeah, I'm telling <laughs> you, if you guys don't get yours from him, good, because I want to get mine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, thanks for all the love, oh, wow. everybody in the chat. They're saying yeah. great show. Hopefully they learned something tonight. That's what it was all about, really. I mean, it's very cool. We we won't uh be on next week because it's Easter, right? Uh, I think it is. Yeah, so everybody sure. everybody needs to just relax with their family and have a good time at Easter. Yeah, because today's Palm Sunday. Uh next week, next Sunday's Easter. And uh yeah, so we'll either come back on the 24th or the 1st. We'll let you guys know. We'll be back. We're just not certain oh, yeah. which, which one of those. <laughs> we'll be like the Terminator. Are. I'll be back. I'll be back. Yeah, and we'll have a good topic. We have a bunch of good ones on the burner. Uh, we'll have some good giveaways for those as well. Um, but, wow, uh, Michael Vidovich, thank you. Uh, West Shore Hobbies, uh, Diggers Den, thank you. Uh, once again, got to give you guys your props, uh, and just appreciate you, uh, and, and your support and for all you guys mm -hmm. tuning in, uh, especially like you YouTubers that are tuning in to help us out too. We appreciate you guys. You know, a lot of times we can't say hi or give shout outs and even the ones that aren't YouTubers, you know, like just the regular guys coming in every, every week. Thank you. We do see you. We appreciate you. Yep. If you ever need anything, reach out to us. We have Facebook pages, you know, whatever. I did. Sorry, Andy. 
I saw a comment about another giveaway, and I'll tell you what, since we have 44 in the chat still, still going pretty strong, I think we'll I think yeah. I'm gonna give away another pencil kit. What do you think? Let's do it. I mean, it's it's related to the topic, so I yeah. think we should just roll it, right? Let that many in uh, watching. Yeah, so uh, let me prep Everything. this up. Everybody watch and type the yard here in the comments. Every week, I feel like it's the end of uh, Ferris Bueller, where you know he comes out and he's like, "You're still here. <laughs> go, go." Right. Heck yeah! So everybody in the chat still type the yard. We're gonna give away another cool pencil kit. Charlie, it was great seeing you the other weekend too. We love you, brother. Your hospitality is just so appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate you guys tuning in, man. I, I said it a million times, but uh, <clears throat> definitely awesome to see you guys. We always try to do giveaways related to the to the show. You know what I mean? It just seems fitting. Um, I should I should have gave him like a crappy silver coin to try. Well, not silver coin, but a crap. I ain't giving you none of my coppers, man. They're mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you none of my coppers. Man. But hopefully you can get a copper to test it out on. But yeah, uh, Diggers Den, thanks again for uh, hooking me up there. Preserve it, wax, two stickers. Um, the mechanical cleaning pencils and some extra lead inserts and uh, copper, a bunch of bunch of goodies in this bag. We'll send it out to you. Um, awesome giveaway for sure. I kind of want to use mine just to try it out. So, uh, all right. So let's check it out. Sorry to blab. Everybody's like, do the giveaway. Do the hey, giveaway. Just know you blab all you want, son. It's all good. <clears throat> all good. All right, Don't be sending me no pictures of horse tack either. Yeah. <laughs> no, not you. All right. Uh, share the screen. Let's see where we're at here with giveaway tool. <laughs> Collecting. And in. Hey, Greg, that was pretty pretty rough last night. Uh, I can't believe Jason had like I had to leave. It was like sixteen hundred and fifty or something like that, and it was crazy. He and, needed you know, some help from my giveaway tool style. <laughs> well, and then you couldn't slow the chat down. You know, when you can't slow the chat down, it doesn't even matter if you do the giveaway. You it can't make it hard. It. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. I don't know if we could have helped with that. It, it had nothing to do with him, really. It's just we've not seen an, uh, a live stream go that heavy. Yeah, uh, that was a lot of people. Wondered at once. That was epic. Heck yeah. That All really right, was. Speak. That's the word. That was epic in my eyes. That was a lot of people. Good job, Jason. Um, yeah, he did a really good job. Yeah. So, all right. So let's do this. We got, I think we got the right amount of people to go. Yeah, Another it was. Pencil really kit. <laughs> Bam. Yeah, and somebody said the chat was spinning like a slot machine, Don Williams. <laughs> it sure was. Yeah. So, all right. <clears throat> Here we go, everybody. Enter the yard real quick if you haven't. Because it's going down. It's going down. All right, here it goes, guys. 37. Wow. Here it goes. You guys will stay up all night for free crap, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. Hey. Hey. hey, that's our boy. Yep. Heck yeah. Traver. Yep. That's awesome. Let me clear yeah, he's the one that said he was going to send me pictures of horse tack. Don't bother, buddy. Awesome, man. He's an awesome supporter, too, man. He, he, he's, he's always looking forward to the show. He's 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 hitting me up on Facebook saying, man, I'm really looking forward to the show. And he's he's always, man. And that's that's awesome because it's like those are the kind of guys that really keep Dustin and I rolling to do these shows. So, I mean, it's, More what a great he's a vet. He's a vet, and he actually did fight to protect our butts. So, uh, yeah, good man. Very good man. Congrats, yeah, awesome. my brother. Went to a good last dude. year to win now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, any uh, any other news before we shut her down? <clears throat> no, like... brother, I think it was a good show tonight. Uh, I had a great day today. I'm tired walking over them fields with you and in the woods, and then dry, riding the the four wheeler. I mean, I'm pooped. <clears throat> but this show was awesome. I think we have the best group of people that tune in every time and we appreciate you and like we said we appreciate the youtubers that take time out um to come in and check us out too right. um awesome awesome guests tonight 
<clears throat> what did Buckle Boy say he's going to get the Louisiana Navy or something like that? The... <laughs> I don't know what that meant. I, I don't know. I'll have to ask him about that. But just a great show. Frank was awesome, um, and we appreciate you guys. Uh, like we said, we won't be here next week, but probably yeah. the week after, if if not the first. And then we're going away in May, the second weekend of May, right? Yeah, uh, Dirt Digging PA. Dirt Digging PA, that's a big one coming up. It, it, just to talk about Dirt Digging PA for a minute, because, I mean, I got to tell you guys, I, I freaking love Dirt Digging PA. You're not chasing history, okay? You're not going there to chase history, all right? You're not going there to get all the fines in the world. You're going there to party, but not in a party sense. It's just a great atmosphere. It's a family atmosphere. You go in, you do your group hunts and stuff. You do uh, seated hunts. Um, it's just such a great time. They have, is it Straub, the beer? Oh, brewery, yeah, brewery, yeah. Yeah, they come every year. They give away cases and cases of beer. Yeah. They have live taps there. You can sample all their beers. Yeah. And, and when I say sample, you know, you can go there as long as you're not getting drunk <laughs> off the feet. You can keep drinking the beers, you know. They give them you a little cup. You can go up there 10 times. Mm -hmm. No one cares. But it's just such a great time. Uh, Daniel Edmondson comes and does the night hunt uh, where we do the, the – did you do that, the silver hunt at night? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. for all you guys that, like, may get frustrated at other hunts or whatever, and if, if you want to just have a good time hanging out with metal detectorists and just relaxing, go to Dirt Digging PA. Right. Yeah, it might be sold out. It might be sold out. I'm not sure. Might be. Yeah, they were pretty close. But, uh, yeah, definitely a good event. Uh, yep. you know, there's just, there's a lot of good events out there. You just got to get oh, to yeah. one, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm just saying, like, out of all the other ones, because this is not, like, a, a challenge to any. You know, like, come out swinging. That was more meeting YouTubers, chasing a little bit of history and all that stuff. Right. Seeing some really beautiful countryside. Um, Dirt Digging PA is, like, it, it isn't like any of them, because it really is just a celebration of detectorists. Just coming together to <laughs> get stuff and have fun. Right. Awesome. So, yeah, just a different game. We don't know our next topic yet. We'll talk amongst ourselves and we'll we'll broadcast it like I always do a day or two beforehand. But uh, but yeah, once again, like I said, all everybody's still watching. We definitely appreciate it. Please check out my YouTube channel, Lost Boys Recovery, if you haven't already. Give me a look. I mean, uh, check some of my videos out. Uh, subscribe if you like what I do. Same thing with Dustin's channel, uh, Dutch Boy Adventures. Um, do check his channel out as well. Um, and if you like what he has, you know, throw him a subscribe and. Thumbs up, Jason. And, Jason, were your ears ringing? We were talking about you. <laughs> oh, there he is. <clears throat> What's up, dude? <laughs> How you doing, brother? It was good stuff, though, man. It was really good stuff. Yeah, Jason's chat, man. His chat was flying like crazy. Though I was trying to watch it, and it was just like brruh, brruh. it was like yeah, super fast. I, so. I don't think you guys. I, I've never seen sixteen hundred people in a chat. I have not. Yeah, it's nuts. I mean, ours is winding down now. I mean, it was like 60 yeah. to 70 at one time, but man, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, no, no. <clears throat> Anyways, I, I'm good. We're You guys, I'm going to end my part on this by just saying one thing. All you guys have a blessed and happy Easter. Whatever your faith is, just enjoy the day. Celebrate your family. And uh, God bless. Right. Yeah. I just, I just people, a lot of people on their phones and doing that stuff. That's a day I'm really going to try to just chill from all that technology stuff, really be with your family that, you know, Easter Sunday, yep. kind of take it all in and, and never, I mean, like Buckle Boy lost his mentor of digging and you never know when your last day is and not to get yep. all sentimental on everybody out here or nothing like that. But yep. I mean, it's so true. So. Yeah. So God bless you guys, each and every one of you. Heck yeah. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, great show. Yes, sir. And I guess we're going to shut her down. The shutter down. Have a good night, folks. Have a good night, guys. See, See you next time. Yep. Peace out. Peace <laughs> out.